Hello, everyone. Uh, this is John Atkinson. I am here once again doing an interview for content for the circumcision, circumcision in quotes, harms documentary or docu series. And I'm here with Troy today to go over the list of items. Troy, please introduce yourself and let us know how you got involved with this. Uh, first of all, my name is Troy, and uh, I'm 51 years old currently, and or 51 years young. Um, <laughs> And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you, John, about this topic. It's really important to me. It's almost like a secret hobby of mine. Um, and I really came about this through really foreskin restoration um, around the late 90s, early 2000s. That was kind of my rabbit hole um, to become an intactivist and, you know, um, uh, really speaking out um, about it and or speaking of it. Um, just uh, just to be a, a voice for the, the voiceless and and realizing that it is uh, really, the more you learn and the more you dig into it, the more you um, don't know about it. And, and it's uh, just a very solid topic to talk about. And it's, it's it, you know, it's one of those sayings and we've all heard it is, it's the most common surgery in America and we don't talk about it. Yeah. And that is, that is utterly scary um to, to just that one statement so um you know in my talk it's going to be pretty much you know pandora's box and really early on in my life as a young boy in minnesota red hair and and freckles i had that pandora box opened and closed real quick and then it wasn't not until probably you know well before facebook was even around before you know gmail was around Yahoo was popular. It was really the birth of the internet. And that's really when I opened that Pandora's box and I left it open. And uh, wow, what a trip. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's really when, for me personally, a little a bit of my soul was, was taken. I mean, it was taken a long time ago, mm -hmm. but that's when I realized it. Yeah, I hear yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, I know this is off topic a little bit, but is uh, Yahoo email like your first email address? No, actually, my first email was hotmail. Hotmail. Oh, okay. It was, it was yeah, I was at work and I heard uh -huh. a lot of people talking about getting their own email, personal email, and I was like, which yeah. one's the best one? And yeah. hotmail, hotmail was the topic of the hot one. You know, yeah, no pun intended, but no, uh, <laughs> it's yeah. true. Yeah. and I don't even remember what what hotmail email it was but yeah it was mm -hmm. it was the platform uh, hotmail so yeah yeah those that those are around you know 45 to 50 or older remember that, that yeah that hotmail was around right here <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're aging ourselves yeah you got me by a year <laughs> <laughs> well but, actually I, i'm only a couple like well, almost three months less than three months away from yeah being right there with you oh. sounds good yeah but i appreciate the opportunity to talk about this yeah. uh Absolutely. You know, it's one of those favorite topics that I like how to talk about because it's, it's almost like therapy for me. Yeah. You know, yeah. The more I talk about, yeah. 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 Um, and I'm, I'm excited that I'm able to put more faces and voices, you know, audio uh, to this because, you know, we're out there being keyboard warriors all the time. Some of us go out there and, you know, protest and blood stained pants or just holding signs or whatever, but, um, yeah, I want to. I want to. I want people to see that there's a lot of faces in this movement. Oh, absolutely. And there's there's so many that don't talk about it. They're intactivists. Yeah. There's there's a lot of levels of intactivism. There's there's a secret closeted intactivist. Mm -hmm. There's the inactive ones. There's the active. Yeah. And there's the there's the ones that are burnt out, and yeah. then there's the ones that are so passionate. Um, they're they're the gentle messengers, and then there's the outspoken ones that really get in your face and, and really are angered by this, that is that politicians and doctors don't just shut it down right now today. Yeah. Um, and those are the ones that are just angered about it. And so there's all these levels of intactivism. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think I've, I think I've been on all of those levels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of parallels, I think, to uh, the gay rights, you know, pride movement you know it, there was you know it, over time how same same sort of levels you know i had people that were closeted about you know their status yeah and, yeah and but, that were 
Hey, I am what I am, and I'm happy that I am. And I'm, yeah, uh, I'm mad that you know I'm being, you know, um, oppressed or whatever because I am. Yep. You know, sexual uh, sexual orientation was was silenced for so many years. Um, the slavery movement was you know silenced for many years. We have these yep. movements where uh, human rights have always been kind of on the tip of the iceberg, but bodily autonomy is is kind of been one of those like silence ones that because it 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 hits butts with um culture and religion and and yeah. all these different you know Taboos. family family and you know all, you know values it, oh it just it just permeates all of society and america is top of the list yeah yeah and a lot of people don't want to talk about their family members or you know the status of their, of their family members yeah. you know genitalia or whatever you know, i i was having a thought just a while ago about how you know we should change the paperwork that says you know male and female where you just have two check boxes um yeah you know, a lot of people a lot of people want to see you know and, and in between or something like that maybe intersex or whatever um and i'm talking about sex not gender you know not what you know what you believe in your head but you know physically what you are down there it's like we yeah. should have um a male c and male i and then female c and female i yeah why not you know and yeah. it would be interesting because they use that information to you know, put together t- statistics and all that it's like well it would be interesting to find out like how many pedophiles are you know male c's versus male i's for example it, you know um rapists you know how many rapists yeah. are circumcised oh, yeah. versus non-circumcised intact yeah. i should i should say you know that's a proper term for uncircumcised is intact yeah um you can't be undone un, unlose an arm um so exactly um yeah. yeah uh before we move on i, I just want to preface it and just say you know yeah you know you, you mentioned john about you know saying these words and you know the body the body you know, when we say heart, we don't automatically go, oh, that's a bad word, you know, yep. let alone liver or toe or, you know, penis is not a bad word. It's a mm-hmm. body part. Yeah. But China is not a bad word. It's a body part. And in American culture, that's, I mean, not, let's not even talk about circumcision. Let's talk about just calling it what it is. You know, stop mm-hmm. talking, you know, it's, we've got so many um, different terms and confusion uh, about you know what we call a penis is is just like crazy yeah. so, but i just want to preface it by saying you know um and you know when we talk about circumcision and the circumcision trauma that goes with it um there's certain people that are really headstrong on on being angry about their parents uh, allowing them to have that done to them and and i i, I fall in that camp where i don't blame my parents um i love Mm -hmm. it i love them dearly and i know that if if they knew that i was dealing with this um to the degree i am um they would never they would have never allowed me to go into this other room and get circumcised um and 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 back then and even now it's 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 camouflaged as medical and oh it's better it's better for him to get circumcised now Mm because then it's it's tougher you know if he has to get it done when he's older yeah. So it, it's blatant, blatant um, myths and lies that perpetuate this whole thing. And and but you know I I don't uh, I don't blame my parents um, because you know I have a good relationship with them. And but I do blame society. I blame the doctors. I blame the medical professionals that are training these new um, physicians and nurses and doctors because they should know better. They yeah. should. They 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 they, they need to. Um, take the ethical um, high ground on this. So yeah. that's where I stand on it. Yeah, I often say, you know, this is like the only surgery where medical professionals use a euphemism instead of a, a proper professional medical term. Um, you know, you you don't use a euphemism for an appendectomy, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, why why are we using you know whenever you use the word circumcision you're really referring to a ritual um something that was and really the word circumcised just means to cut it in a circle when you look at the latin roots yeah. so um but at the same time you know a lot of people want to just say well it's general mutilation or it's you know circumcision is general mutilation 
Uh, some people will say circumcision is male genital mutilation. Well, actually, they often call female circumcision, you know, circumcision as well. So, you know, they might call female genital mutilation female circumcision, depending on, you know, who, who you're talking to. So... Yeah, um, those those lines those lines get less blurred when you when you really research this with unbiased knowledge. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the problem is, is if you go to someone that ha is you know so indoctrinated and hasn't been woken up at all about this, uh, if you just jump to the you know term genital mutilation, they're like they might just shut you out. Right, they'll stop listening to you right away. So, um, I, I've been involved when uh, big changes in major corporations multiple times, and one of the things I've realized is that you can't always get people to make a, a big leap. Right, you can't get them to go from doing something one way and then tomorrow do some do something completely different, and they're so used to doing it this way. You kind of have to give them stepping stones or you know training or whatever. You have to you have to kind of work their way over there they, it's like saying well jump you know 20 yards um they're gonna say i can't do that you know screw you or whatever um but if you give them stepping stones okay take you know 20 steps they might do that right so yeah. when it comes to this i often say well um what they're doing is they're removing the prepuce so i call it prepucial amputation some people are like well amputation means removing like a you know a limb or something like that it's like you no, know, it means removing a body part. I mean, you can yeah. amputate your ear, you can amputate your nose, <laughs> um, or if you want to, you can call it uh, something else that they, I often see it called as postectomy. So kind of like an appendectomy, a postectomy. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have this list of items that I try to cover to make sure we cover all the um, all the ground here about the many ways that the virtual general cutting practices harm um, and I'm not just talking about mail you know that we're used to here in the United States um, but there you know there's a female side of it too that's going on in the world mm -hmm. um, but I kind of focus a little bit on the harms of males I think it most people understand the harms to females because they hear it on mainstream media so frequently, uh, particularly about like the husband stitch or whatever, and they hear about the worst form of female circumcision, cotton or, or what people have come to understand as FGM, because that's what they started changing it to in, what was it, the 90s, late 90s or whatever, and they changed the language a little bit. So hopefully we'll change the language to just genital mutilation across the board. <laughs> Uh, so the main topics are physical harms, partnership, um, sexual relationship partnership harms, uh, psychological harms, relationships, uh, the, how it harms relationships just in general between all of us, right? And then I, I delve into um, FGM and how how this is all related and how that's tied to this, tied to, uh, to male genital mutilation as well. And then the very last thing I, I talk about social productivity. So as I go through these, you know, um, please feel free to share whatever, you know, don't worry about TMI. This is a sex positive air place. And just like you said, you know, vagina and, and penis are not bad words. We're, you know, we're professionals here. We're grown ups here. Let's not act like, you know, uh, middle schoolers that oh, 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 he, he said penis or whatever <laughs> yeah um yeah so yeah just uh, i'll stop i'll pause in between the things and that'll be your opportunity to say yeah this affects me this way or that way or um or i i identify or, or i know this person that did this whatever sounds good so uh, the word acroposteon is what i like to address first because Supposedly, in the um, biblical times when this was originally occurring, um, they only cut off the end. And John Geisker did a presentation, it's recorded on my YouTube video or YouTube channel um, about penis engineering. He did a presentation, the presentation was in Bellevue, Washington. I set up a, a Your Whole Baby booth there, and, um, and he joined us and, um, and did a presentation. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I asked him to try to cover the engineering of it, you know, cover how things physically work. And it, oh, it's great because he's uh, he had a background in um, in marine engineering. So it's kind of neat how he could connect the pieces. So it, most anyone that's an engineer can really identify with, you know, how this physically works differently. So the acropostion is the is a part that just hangs off the end of the penis. Um, it's like the ridge band, the part that is kind of closed up. And um, and today we remove the, in most cases it seems, the entire prep use, everything covering the the penis glands, right? Mm-hmm. So for those viewers that are watching. That's my uh, mock penis. So it's a, pr- it's a pretty good model there. You got yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm 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 I say rated PG here. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so l- less graphic than a dildo, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I I think uh, actually one of a uh, fellow intactivist used a dildo and got in trouble on uh, YouTube. So so yeah. far this hasn't uh, offended anyone enough to <laughs> yeah get me in trouble on YouTube. Yeah, that's pretty ingenious. So. And uh, and unlike a you know a lot of dildos don't have the you know the moving part so this, true this works. so yeah I, I wish I would have bought more because now you can't even I can't even find these I've even asked people that can um, they know how to crochet but they're like well is there a, a pattern or something I you know it's hard to figure out so yeah it would really be nice to find the person that made these uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm jealous of one person um, Mitchell um, he got one of these made before. The, the person kind of disappeared um that is colored based on the sorrel study mm. so uh, like, I'd interesting like to, i'd really like to do some demonstrations with that one well if you if you find one um let me know because i could use one in my foreskin restoration group you know just to explain oh. the parts of the penis so yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. that's a good idea i attend the um nor meeting in la uh, we've been doing it via zoom uh, lately since yeah the yeah yeah, I did a monthly meeting uh, here in Minneapolis uh, area, Great. and you know because of COVID, um, uh-huh. obviously we can't get together face to face. But I've done a couple of Zooms too. Oh, excellent! There's yeah. been some talk. Um, I I was suggested it to the head people at Norm saying, "Hey, why don't you know, Zoom has become quite the popular thing, especially since the pandemic? Why not have a you know a nationwide one or something um, where you know people get together and talk?" So. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it seems weird that um, a lot of people that are in the foreskin restoration uh, groups, uh, they like to keyboard stuff, and they, they, but they don't like to really do video conferencing too much. Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. And even, even in, in when it comes down to uh, face-to-face, you know, you, I'd have a, a meeting once a month, and my average is probably about three, three guys. Okay. So and we then get a and little I'm, bit more in LA. And, and and I and I'm in Minneapolis, uh, which is a major, major uh, city. So okay. it's a it's about a, about also about getting the word out. But yeah. once the word's out, you know, you'd think that it would be you'd you'd fill auditoriums and, and stadiums with the information yeah. we really have. Yeah. Really shocking. Can everyone find you by going through the norm.org website? Yes. Yeah, I'm I'm actually listed on the, the list of locations. Um Great on the on their website yeah norm.org yeah um for those viewers that like to that have watched my other videos there's certain links that i've decided not to put into the description of these videos because um because they link to sites that have images that youtube might not appreciate so sure yeah <laughs> no yeah that's fine so you know reach out to me on facebook something like that if you have have questions yep exactly um, so yeah, so I'm I'm pre- fully prepucially amputated myself. Um, they didn't just do the acropostion, and and uh, I did another video. This, this is something that's been said over and over and over again. Is, you know, it's 15 square inches, and yeah, yeah I was like, okay, yeah, I don't care whether it's only one square inch. Yeah, it was my square my square inch. <laughs> it shouldn't have been removed. Exactly. But yeah, I took this one day, and I just I wanted to make a point to something, <clears> whatever. So um, I had my one of my sons take a video of me as I took a, um, a ruler, and you know I, I identified, you know, put a safety pin where this was by the ridge of the corona, right? And then 
open this up and follow it down. And then I put a ruler on here. It's like, well, that's three inches that way. And let's measure it around. One, two, three, four. <laughs> oh my gosh. Five inches. <laughs> oh my gosh. It really is 15 square inches. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a that's a good model if, if that matches up pretty good. So yeah, yeah, I I don't know, maybe it's a little bit big. I, yeah, I average. I don't know. Uh, but if you but if you came up with fifteen, that's that's that hits the mark. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So. And you know, obviously, some guys have would have more or less, but yeah. you know, there's there's a mean there where, and regardless of of how much or how little, it's it it all matters. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, some guys are cut tighter and or looser or whatever too. So. Yeah, yeah. For me, I I lost it all, and, and in fact, it, it included all of all of my friend in them. Oh, like did they like carve out underneath your glands? Your totally brain? flat. Totally. Oh, flat. Yeah, so it's flat there. Not not a yeah. divot, but totally yeah. like no no structure of the front mm -hmm. limb. No mm -hmm. hint that the, there was ever a front limb there. It's mm -hmm. all it's just flat. So yeah. it was all all removed. So okay. it's it's funny that you, you know, in biblical days you mentioned was is that, um, you know, they just clip the 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 tip of it. Well, yeah. And then some people say, well, I'm I'm gonna get the the tip snipped, and they yeah. take it all off. So that's a it's a misconception of how much is taken off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In modern days, right now, even even 2021, it's like yeah. I know it's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But there, there are some doctors that, you know, take off less, but yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you, mm. because you're, you're proving the point that if you're taking off less, because you know, it has va some value, you're proving, you. you're proving, they're proving the point that they shouldn't be touching it at all. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't even like the word foreskin because to me, that would be just acupuncture and just the, you know, the part past because yeah. for, you know, before <laughs> the yeah. penis, right? Uh, yeah. you know, if, if, that is, if you're considering, you know, this, the penis, well, the, it's all penis, you know, even if there's, you know, skin hanging off the end, that's also part of the penis. It blows me away that some doctors say, well, the foreskin is like, you know, uh, there's a video from with bloodstain men arguing with the, an uh, older doctor, <laughs> Jewish doctor too, but you know, saying she was comparing it to like a hangnail. It's like it's nothing like a hangnail. It's not even like a fingernail because a fingernail is dead. It's not, you know, it's, it's yeah. Human a, finger, waste. a fingernail is going to grow back too. Foreskin or yeah. don't grow back. No, like like lizards. Like, this is <laughs> lizard a doctor. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. Get yeah, it. I, 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 uh. uh Staying on this, on this topic, I I was circumcised pretty dang tight too. On that note, so I think when when I opened that Pandora box uh, a little bit, you know, little by little, I I kind of maybe gravitated to it quicker because uh, because of maybe that condition. You know, it, it I knew that I was missing something. And in fact, when I go back to you know, grade school, I, mean, I remember, and, and you remember things and they must mean something very, very important. If you remember them at age like seven or between yeah. seven and 10, I remember pushing my glands into my, what skin I had when I was mm -hmm. flaccid. I remember pushing them in like, like knowing, and I didn't know, mm -hmm. but I knew that this was supposed to be inside. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. At, at a deep level. That, that's, that's one of the, you know, little life points of this whole topic that Kind of lead me to this, like yeah, I realized you know I I just start doing this research on on the internet when I was in in the library and I that was the first thing that I did is I I just read a little bit on the foreskin, a little bit on the circumcision and then when I researched foreskin, foreskin restoration was in that search in that search mode. It was yeah. it was it was like what's that foreskin yeah. restoration and that's what led me into intactivism. Was that so. What, You've known about this um, for 30, 40 years on that? Yeah, yeah. So this goes back to the late 90s, early okay. 2000s that I did that search. And, and prior to that, I had little tidbits of, you know, like in grade school when we have health at sex yeah. education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All I remember is the whole, the, all I remember is 
is the 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 teacher saying yeah and some some kids are well most kids are are circumcised because it's healthier and better and and then it was quickly turned to the next subject it yeah, was not yeah, like we're going to camp here and talk about the the function of the foreskin or the prepuce mm. and, and what's its value yeah. you know it was just like and all i yeah. can think of back you know now <laughs> thinking back then was i wonder what the intact guys if there was any probably not too many mm-hmm. I wonder what they felt when when they're having they have theirs and and they're think they're being told well it's better to have it without it yeah what, what a mix up what you know uh, crazy yeah i um i my my two te- my two kids are teenagers right and uh they their school district had a meetup for um, parents to you know learn about what's going to be taught to the kids and all that and of course i go in there and i ask questions like well what happens if one of these you know, boys ask, well, I don't have that foreskin or whatever. Yeah. And what, you know, what would you tell these, these kids? And, oh, well, you know, we all come in different shapes and sizes and, uh, and some parents choose to do it. And that's about all. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very, very, they try to, they, they try to skip over that controversial. Uh-huh. You know, and then some people say, John, this topic is so controversial. We shouldn't talk about it. Well, you know what? <laughs> My answer is, then stop circumcising babies. Yeah, exactly. Make it make it make it a, a legal body modification for the adult, the man that owns the penis. He can do it if he wants to, but don't don't put it on any, you know, kind of put your feet in their shoes, per se. Yeah. And every every child, boy or girl, deserves that right mm-hmm. to choose. Yep. You take it. You take it away. You circumcise them one day old um now now they're stuck with it mm-hmm. yeah so yeah i was circumcised pretty tight and that that uh it was so tight that it curved a little bit to the left uh, and, and foreskin restoration up to this point has i can tell it, it has cur- uh straightened it out a little bit and yeah so it yeah so that kind of gives me a little hope and it's kind of a resource for me to to settle the the nerves of circumcision trauma for me is is you know doing this kind of stuff talking about it um being you know letting people know that they're not the only ones that are dealing with these feelings of you know abandonment or or like well what's what am i missing or sex is different than it should be you know there's Mm -hmm. so many stuff to talk about and so many feelings that you know men you know in our culture we're not supposed to even show emotions we're supposed to be tough guys through and throughout yeah but deep but deep down you know we're all we all started with as baby boys mm-hmm. yeah and hey, you started putting things together a little bit earlier than i did i was i was in my mid late 30s before mm-hmm. everybody started putting this all together and piecing it yeah. all together so. yeah you mentioned about you know i've been dealing with this for a while i i actually um you know as i said i i started with the foreskin restoration and I pretty much put it away for like eight to 10 years, like nine years. And, uh, and then, and then I kind of rediscovered, you know, the stuff that I was using and I was like, uh, why didn't I just keep doing this? And, mm. and then the internet kind of caught up to me <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because, because Facebook got popular, Twitter now, mm-hmm. um, just the, the social media engine is so much robust now that I think intactivism and, and this message of, of anti-circumcision um, yeah. has, has really gotten good speed on it. And, and I think a lot of boys have, have got their whole bodies because of this. Yeah. And you think back, think back to when um, guys like uh, Van Lewis and his brother and brother K, when he first protested about this with his wife and, um, and Marilyn Vinos when, she was, um, you know, writing books and stuff like that about this, you know, decades ago. Yeah, they didn't have a whole lot of venues to try to get in front of the public. Uh, trailblazers, yeah. absolute trailblazers. You know, there are there are heroes that we we stand on their shoulders for sure. Yeah. Now we have so many options for spreading the word. It's like there's more work that we could do than we have time to. <laughs> to do yeah you know? yeah it's it's amazing yeah. i'm doing you know I, i'm doing what i can on youtube on i've got hundreds and hundreds of videos on tiktok i've done 
plenty of work on Facebook, but that, that just frustrates the heck out of me because <laughs> 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 um, you know, especially with the censorship and all that stuff. And yeah. uh, it's hard to keep track of the comments sections on posts on Facebook too. Yeah. Uh, I like Twitter a whole lot better uh, for that. Uh, you don't, your comments don't get lost in the <laughs> in the pile of hay, right? Yeah, talk about a rabbit hole, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and you know, you can there's you know you can um, improve Wikipedia, and there's so many options for getting in front of people. It's nuts. So, mm -hmm. so that uh, that was uh, we were talking about the acrobatrion. So, uh, and you also mentioned that yeah, it's you know it is important body part that's being removed because we do know uh, even through scientific studying peer-reviewed um, sorrel study and uh, and even the Basio study even though there's a lot of people that hate what Jennifer said about you know the results <laughs> about it uh, showed her own bias on it but um, both of the studies identified that yes it is sensitive skin whether you talk about sensitive celiac touch or heat or whatever it's sensitive yeah skin it's not it's not a fingernail um you know that you clip off it's not hair that you cut off it's not it's not vestigial it's real live you know tissue yeah yeah on and, that topic on that topic it's like even the aap say a circumcised penis is the same as an intact penis and that's that's oh, such man. a blatant lie yeah. um you know and i it was w well in you know in those early years of foreskin restoration that I, I probably was maybe three, six months into it. And I already had, obviously I had decon, decontarization happen. Um, Cause I was walking around without a device. And I remember exactly the spot in, in the cities here in the suburb of Minneapolis. I remember the exact spot where I could, I could hardly walk. I, I had to walk like a cowboy because that sensitivity had, had, you know that callous skin had fluffed off yeah and, and all of a sudden my my penis was way like 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 firework like fireworks like yeah. electricity just going off it was like star wars like the emperor hands uh -huh. you know <laughs> <laughs> my penis was like on fire well, that's a good way, like, buddy. And, that, and that was the light john that was the light bulb that went off for me like oh my gosh what are we doing yeah you know this is this is so wrong because if it was not, if it, if it didn't change for me, I would have been like, eh, this is nothing. Yeah. So when you're, I, what you're saying is that the, the, the glands is the glands the, after the keratinization comes it, off, right? Exactly. That, I yeah. mean, I, and I, at that point, I didn't even see it happening. It was more, it was not a visual thing. It was yeah. a physical thing. But then later on, I had, you know, kind of, kind of like clicked onto that and I was more cognitive of it and I was watching closely. And then I, I did physically saw my dried skin flake off almost like uh, snake skin dying off and flaking off probably a, at least, at least two, three times on separate occasions. Oh, so, so it was, it was pretty yeah. intense for me. And that was, that was the wake up call it. And that, yeah. and, and also that messed with my inner spirit, like, I mean, it was that was the twilight zone moment for me. It was like, oh my god, I feel like I'm living in this nightmare, and it's real. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I know. We're still doing, and we're still yeah. doing it. And I was, it was almost like trauma um, induced living. It was, it was, huh. it was. That was a, that was the time when I had actually people, you know, say to me, Troy, you, you, you've changed. I had actually people. I mean that, and I didn't. I really didn't dawn on me why they were saying it but now after all these many years I, I i know exactly what they were seeing in me was all my discovery of circumcision yeah yeah twilight zone is a good way of putting it um especially for those of us that are old enough to remember <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you have to go on on netflix they, they do they do have all the episodes on netflix right now so yeah so even even the ap in the 70s i think it was 71 um said that the uh for the foreskin or the prep use really would be more appropriate, um, is there to protect the glands. Like, well, just like you're pointing out, the glands need to be protected. It's, an inter it's supposed to be inside, like your tongue. It's inside. Yes, it comes out for a while, but then it goes back in. Um, yeah. And the, you know, the, you know, protects it from 
you know, anything rubbing on it, right? The foreskin keeps, you know, it's it's not sensitive. The, this part of the foreskin isn't sensitive, like the glands is sensitive. Um, so this can handle being on um, on underwear, right? Whereas yep. uh, an intact, you know, normal glands can't because it's too yep. sensitive. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, to give, um, to give the analogy, it was almost like I was recircumcised because I didn't have that force. I didn't have that prepuce to cover my newly decarnalized glands, glands to protect them. Yeah. You know, I was kind of like living this like second circumcision, which yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it back because um, there's way, there's a lot of great things that come with, uh, with doing it, but yeah. um, boy, but you know, dealing, dealing with the emotional part of it, you can't escape that. Yeah. And, and some, you know, and some guys, some guys, you know, have no problem with it. They just, they do the physical thing and they, they're, they're, they're almost like just non-emotional, which is great. And there's some guys that they, they can't even go there because it reminds them of their circumcision so much that they can't do anything restoration wise where there, there's that. It's like me. <laughs> are you, you fall in that camp? Yeah, pretty much. I, I, I've thought about it. I'm really, really tight. Just like you um, said, um, and I don't feel like I, the skin that I want to move or want to stretch is mm -hmm. just a little bit. I okay. don't want to, I don't want to stretch this part at all because this is my inner mucosa. Um, and I don't want to stretch that part because I think I have pretty much all my inner mucosa still, but I have very little shaft skin. Yeah. That's the part that I would want to stretch out. And there's already the tools that I've seen don't like do this. Unfortunately, they, they grab here and then they use the, the end of the penis as a counter and then they pull. Oh, uh, that's not just pulling on this, but it's, it's pulling on everything down here too. The, you know, your, your, your scrotum and stuff like that. And your scrotum is going to slide up and you're not, we're going to get a whole lot of tension there. So I need, I need yeah. tension to do like this. And the, the penis moves so much, you know, it, it expands and shrinks so much, even through the day, whether you're getting an erection or not, that the idea of putting something on there, um, just, it just seems so uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, it just seems like a nightmare as it is. A lot of guys spend so much time um, dealing with it and uh, the emotions, like you were saying, is, is yeah. tough to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think what happens, you know, when we get cut as babies and we don't remember it, you know, well, you know, a lot of people talk about how babies cry during diaper change and stuff like that, uh, after, especially right after they've gone through this. It's like, well, the, this is really raw and shouldn't be touching things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, especially a diaper that might have feces and <laughs> urine in it and all that. Um, and then the keratinization builds up on it and that helps reduce the the feelings like you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, sensitivity. All right, so uh, yeah, so that we did sensitive, and then we just covered glance protection. Uh, and then we have the rolling mechanism. So you know, people think of the foreskin as just a flap of skin. Well, it's not. It's you know, that's kind of like calling your eyelid as flap of skin, but your eyelid is more of a flap of skin than your prepuce is. Your prepuce is a double fold of skin, and mm -hmm. people refer to you know turtlenecks. Well, actually, it's very much like a turtleneck. <laughs> and yeah. imagine taking the skin off of a poor turtle's neck. You know, what would happen to its poor head? It wouldn't be able to, you know, you know, go out and come back in like it is intended to. Same thing with penis. It's very, very much mobile between being flaccid and maybe even retracting into the body when things are cold and, and extending, you know, way out. And that, that's a lot of movement. And you need that skin there to allow the proper movement. And uh, and some men um, have, even when they're erect, they might still have some mobility there. So when um, when they have sex, they're, you know, the in and out motion is, involves a lot less friction. As you can see, it didn't slide underneath my fingers, right? Mm -hmm. It stayed underneath my fingers. Yep. So it went that far in to, you know, whether it be the vagina or anus or whatever, without, without friction. So that, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a whole lot of lubrication to allow that kind of movement in and out, right? Um, but that, the um, lubrication is the next thing, right? 
Um, so because your glands is covered, um, and this is a mucosal tissue, if you know, if you're if you, I don't know how you are with being restored, but you know, a, a man has mucosal tissue. I, mine is. I still believe I have all, almost all of my mu inner mucosa, and that is um, moist, similar to the you know, inside of a vagina, or the inside, you know, any other mucosal part like your mouth or inside your nose or whatever. And uh, so the male gets to bring lubrication to the the act of sex, oh, well, when you're talking about um, heterosexual um, sex, right? Uh, then there's the frenulum, like you're talking about. Um, for me, I think I was cut with a Mogan clamp. So, you know, they pulled the skin up and they they, snap, they clamped it off and then they sliced, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of the methods that are done these days is the, the um, like the Gomco clamp or the Plastibel. In both those cases, they, it involves a bell that goes down and around the the glands, and then they cut down there. So that mm -hmm. removes all the intermucosal that's covering the glands. So it, it's kind of instead of ending up removing down here like I am, they remove up here. Yeah, which is probably what probably what mine was more like was a gompo gompo clamp. A bell. A bell. So. Yep. Yeah, a bell clamp. Yeah. Yeah. I think the plastic bell that that kind of came on the market way later. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's I more of a newer that, so. technique. Th right. That's the string one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and back when they, you and I were kids, plastic wasn't nearly as popular as it is now. Um, yeah. And you and I probably had toys that were made out of metal, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Tonka made some really good. Metal yeah. ones, yeah. Yeah, I remember, I remember pushing around, you know, Tonka trucks, you know, dump trucks, and they were metal back then. They were metal, yeah. Yeah, you're, 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 you're dating us again. <laughs> yeah. But so, yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's a lot of issues with the plastic bell too. Um, and oh yeah. They, you know, you know, the, they tie that. Stuff. I mean, they're dealing with something so small, um, and yeah. they try to tie a string around that, and they if they don't tie it just right in the right place and whatever, and that stuff yeah. off or whatever. Yeah, that can cause them serious. Um, they claim it's a, a bloodless circumcision, and that's not true. Yeah, it, well, it just it cuts off the blood, and then the yeah you know, the prep use dies and sloughs off. Like yeah, you, any other body part. If you <laughs> can't, I can't say I can't see that one being any less painful. That's for sure. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, there's there's not just the pain from getting cut there but also the pain after you know it's exposed and you've got a you know moon there and yeah i don't know yeah it's crazy I, I, yeah I, a lot of people will argue about the pain level and all that it's like so they might or even the pain they might justify it's like well okay so no pain no gain right you know like you gotta you gotta go through the pain to build some muscle and that too or you make my kid go through a little bit of pain so he gains having a better penis <laughs> people justify it and it's like yeah yeah, yeah. but you're still removing a body part that that kid might grow up to want like you know me yep and many yep. other men yeah yeah pain can be one of those benefits that they proclaim for circumcision yeah you know, one method is better than the other, so that's that's the reason why you should do it. And it's like no, let's go back to the basics: human rights and bodily, bodily autonomy. You know? Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the frenulum, got it has a little line here that shows the frenulum, but um, really the frenulum kind of goes down further. You know, it would go down and attach to the the intermucosa, and it's there, kind of like the bottom of your tongue. You have a kind of a frenulum too. Um, that anchors it, and that, but this kind of anchors it the other way. It, it's what pulls the the skin back on top of the glands when the penis um, becomes more flaccid. Yep, kind of like a rubber band in a way. Yeah, exactly. But um, so depending on how things are cut, uh, that's damaged more or less. I think for me, I think that I have a lot of my frenular area here. I mean, of course they snipped it, so it wouldn't pull back on my my inner mucosa, but the sensation is pretty much still there because they didn't carve any of this out at all. And, mm -hmm. I, and it, I didn't get a bell, I got a Mogan, I'm pretty sure. So I, it was down here. So all this is still, especially right underneath here. I've 
I never really put two and two together until I started looking at this movement and seeing and studying this the differences between the intact penis and and the uh, circumcised one. Um, but I started thinking about it after while I'm having sex. It's like, you know, that actually really is a very sensitive spot. <laughs> yeah. So and that's yeah, I feel like that's where things really get going when it's you know when it's time. Yeah, and, and many say that that's kind of the the control mechanism. It's the ejaculatory you know yeah. sensor. It's a sensor for pleasure uh, yeah. and and ejaculation. But and it makes sense because you know when yeah. when the penis is like this, and if they're if you're having sex, um, the frenulum isn't even fully exposed until things get more and more like this, right? Yep. And when when it, and then after the penis was you know really inside of the vagina or whatever, then it's exposed and then you're rubbing it. Yeah, and that's why it gets things going. So um, yeah, that way the guy doesn't ejaculate until he's all the way inside the vagina. It, God or nature, mother nature, whoever you appeal to, designed this perfectly. Yep. Yep, totally agree. Yeah. Don't go cutting it, <laughs> trying to customize it, thinking that we could do better. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Get me all worked up here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally understand. <laughs> yeah. At least you got something left. You know, I don't have anything left. Yeah. So every, every time I, I, I chat in a support group or, um, you know, just mentor somebody that's dealing with the trauma or, you know, yeah. talking about foreskin restoration is, uh, that's one of the topics is, um, you know, how much, if any, of do you have of your friend on left? And a lot of guys don't even know what that is. Like, yeah. well, well, what's that? Mm -hmm. Like, are you serious? This is how great our American education is. We yeah. don't even know our body parts <laughs> or, or parts of our body, Yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, lucky you, John. You uh, have thanks. at least, <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I, I do feel bad for you, Troy. I, I, I um, I've, I, I talked to many guys and yeah, that's the case in a lot of cases. And so, yeah, I, I like to see the bell methods go away faster than the other methods. <laughs> I'd like yeah. to see it all go away, but yeah. 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 I think, I think just getting that knowledge out to say, you know what guys, if, if you're going to do it, at least leave a lot, as much inner mucosa skin as possible. Number yeah. one, number two, leave as much of that frenulum as possible. And then, you know what this, this, this one plus one equals, is it more like a biblical circumcision where you're only taking off the ridge band? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then if you're yeah. gonna do that, well, why, why even remove that? Yeah. At least as comes... adults, you get to draw your own dotted lines. <laughs> you know, and maybe your, yeah. maybe your ridge band doesn't do anything for you and okay. Or it's, it's gone numb somehow or, or someone messed with you when you were a baby and did forceful retractions re and that kind of damaged things down there. And yeah, maybe then, you know, you want to get some parts of it removed so you feel better, or maybe you want to do it because, you know, uh, women supposedly like it better or think that it looks prettier or whatever. Um, you know, if you want, if you're trying to get your glands to, to be exposed, you can do auto circumcision, you know, you can, pull things back and keep it exposed back there but i've i've heard of guys you know that would do that and it's just like you it's like then then their glands just gets you know crazy yeah. sensitive or whatever and <laughs> it's like <Yeah>. nope <laughs> put that back <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so, it will not go through that so yeah, it, yeah it's the stories um of men getting themselves got kind of range big time you know you've got uh, you got the men that did it and totally regret it um and a lot of times I, I'll come across guys that say, yeah, I did it and I'm happy or whatever. It's like, okay, what's your new coverage index? Huh? <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. have no idea why they even, you know, so it's like, I even kind of wonder if they're really telling the truth. You know, maybe they're just saying it to be defensive about the. You but know, also, the but also in a lot of those situations, those guys that are happy with it as being circumcised as an adult, they, they're newly circumcised so everything's kind of like electric electricity wired and it's it's really alive well wait yeah. wait you know 50 years mm -hmm. let's see how what your op opinion you know let's do a survey then yeah are you, are you still happy with it and i i don't know about that because i i i talked to a lot of guys that are intact that they would never cut it off yeah 
And those guys that did cut it off an adult, they were, it was almost a cultural pressure to do it, or it was my misdiagnosis because of uh, phimosis. Yeah. And it was trying to fix well, something. BSO, but, yeah. And the doctor just said, there's only one option. We're going to cut it off. And then once they did it, you know, I'm, I'm the next person per se that they're chatting on online. How do I restore my foreskin? Because this is terrible. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? This is yeah. a, such a nightmare. There's, there's, this, there's a cycle. Yeah, there's guys that have even done videos talking about, you know, talking about the procedure and everything. Talking, you know, they start with one video before they go get it done, and then they talk of another video right after they got it done, and they talk about the, you know, uh, recovery process and all that, and uh, and how you know how they feel about it and all. And so people can go out there and look. Uh, there was one guy that did a video, and boy, he was very regretful. So yeah, it's... I think the main point is, you know. As an adult, you you choose what you want to do with your body. Yeah, you know it's it's no different than a tattoo. You can get a bad tattoo and go, oh my gosh, what was I doing? I must <laughs> yeah. have been drunk. I must have been drunk yeah. that night. Yeah, well, but, it was your choice. Yeah, at least you know? at least that you only have yourself to blame, not you know, yeah. Someone you can else. live with that a lot better, you know. Yeah, but for sure. But if it wasn't your choice, it's it it it's it falls in that category of of um, assault. Yeah, yeah, I always say uh, it's sexual battery of a minor. Yeah, and I, I keep, and everyone says, "Well, it's legal." It's like, uh, where, where? Identify it. Tell me where in the in the law books that it is an exception to sexual battery of a minor. And no one, there, there's no such thing out there. At least not in the United States. Right? Yeah, um, no, it's um, it's more it's more akin akin to um, an Aztec. Uh, tribal ritual bloodletting mm -hmm. than it is a medical procedure that's going to give any benefits yeah, exactly. when you when you when you drill down that that rabbit hole oh my gosh you you will end up in that place and that's uh it, it's just like yeah. You know? yeah 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 but i wouldn't reg i don't regret uh being in this place of knowledge um there's some people that go man i wish i was just you know, like the matrix, put me back in, plug Same me back here. in, <laughs> back in, and let me just be before I knew what I know now. Exactly. I, I get that. I totally understand that. But then we're not, not they're not fixing yeah. anything. We're just, yeah. we're just perpetuating this whole problem. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's, it's a selfish versus the unselfish. The selfish part of me says, you know, I want, I want, I just want to be, I want to be ignorant on this again. Ignorance is a place. Um, you know, I, I want to go have sex again without knowing yeah. that I'm missing something down there. But the yeah. other part says, you know, if I didn't, then I won't be doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And the same thing with that movie as, as an analogy is the guy said, you know, in the matrix, he said, just plug me back. That was very selfish. He was only yeah. thinking of himself. He was not thinking about the, fr the fight for freedom for that whole human race. Yeah. And that's that's kind of an analogy that we have with intactivism, is that we're fighting for the unborn, we're fighting for the voiceless, these young boys that deserve all of their penis. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and it's not it's they, not an easy fight. You know, a lot of us get burnt out. Um, no, we're, it's not. We're dealing with cognitive dissonance. You know, up the yinging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is definitely a righteous fight, though. It is. You know, human human rights and bodily autonomy is is the foundation of this whole thing. It's not anti-religion. You can do whatever you want for religion, yeah. but once you cut somebody's body part off, that's not yeah, that's not religious freedom. Not disease, not not diseased or or has a virus, has no yeah. medical reason. You you there, that's not a. I just yeah no, it's not yeah. right. I often say you know I'm a big one of religious freedom, but mine was stomped on when I was a baby. Yeah. And I'm serving life sentence. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. No parole. Yeah. I'm 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 stuck in this body. All right. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that was the frame and then there's the ridge band. Um, you know, it, which is like where the acroposteon typically is. It's kind of like the lips of the mouth, right? You, where the inner mucosa meets the, you know, the external skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've often he heard men talk about how, I think Michael Winnell referred to this, that when the penis is becoming erect and, um, and you know, the skin is sliding down a little bit and then opening up uh, 
as it goes over the glands, it's, that stretching of the ridge band has its own sensation to itself that actually feels good. So I guess there's a lot of nerves in there. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, but, you guys like you and I have no idea what that feels like, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, that's a good point of, you know, foreskin restoration, uh, not to, not to hit this topic again, but no. it's so, pro it's so prominent for me is, is the more I restore, the more I realize, man, just to have that original pupus and have those sensations that you're talking about. Yeah. I can only, I can only imagine what, you know, foreskin restoration doesn't bring it hundred percent back, you know, that's no. the truth. No. You can get the gliding back. You can get the, the decarinization. You can get yeah. the, um, you can get a lot of benefits back, but you're not going to get a hundred percent. You'll never get a hundred percent. I, I would so, like to see someone do a book or something that, um, or even a website or whatever that showed, um, you know, the circumcised penis, the previously amputated penis, the um, restored penis and the intact penis, because from what I've seen, restored ones, the the it's more like this yarn. It's it, it doesn't have the musculature in it that helps close it, make it go oh. closed. Um, yeah. Over the over it, the glands. It it does happen. Um, it, does it? it all it takes just more overhang growth mm, okay. to get that to get that mechanism back, but it does come back. Okay. I got I've, I've got two guys that are that were circumcised tight. Um, probably a one, two, or three, uh, and they now are like probably an eight or a nine. You know, okay. you could even—I don't even say—I wouldn't say ten, but definitely a nine. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's all closed up like a sphincter, and it it, it it contracts back and forth with like uh, with cold weather, for example. Yeah. So it it does like like act like a, a sphincter and a, um, okay. uh, but. But it takes a lot of time, you know, to get yeah. to that point. So it's a lot of dedication and time to. Yeah. And you know, when you think about it, you're you're stretching the skin, as you know, started on mitosis, right? So you're yeah. stretching things. Um, I, I guess you know, when, when you think about uh, ladies that you know go through pregnancy and they might get stretch marks and all whatever, but a lot of times things go back and tighten back up. So yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Exactly. It yeah. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so all those things that are removed uh, cause um, various problems. Uh, one being hairy shaft, um, and that that's usually I would think that's caused by scrotal webbing. At least for me, that's what it is. Is it because I don't have the prepuce to roll down my penis when I'm getting an erection? It instead pulls up on my scrotum <clears throat> and my pelvic floor. So that scrotum being hairy is on you know, halfway up my shaft and thus hairy shaft. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that. I fall in that category too, where yeah. I think I was, I was circumcised, circumcised so tight that uh, I probably was more of a zero than a one on, on the coverage index scale where I had a, a bit, a bit of a curve to the left, um, which is very, which is kind of weird. Cause I hear that very common. Yeah. Um, well, that, you know, when you think it's, about it, they're, it's they're, almost, it's, it's almost like it's almost like it's a common denominator because of the equipment they use or the angle, you know. Yeah, if they don't put that on perfectly straight, and they're dealing with you know a tiny little thing when they're dealing with an infant, um, you know they can angle it one way or another, and then you end up having shorter skin on one side or the other, right? So they end up with you know curved penis one way or the other. Exactly. Yep. Uh, here. Okay, and then. Um, for me, when I sometimes, and I've seen this, like looking at porn, you can see this the scrotum being drawn up the the shaft, and then the balls, the testes, are pulled up too, right? Because the scrotum isn't that stretched out yet, especially for younger men. Uh, yeah, those yep. that are older, that scrotum is stretched out, much like women's boobs do, <laughs> and uh, and the the testes get drawn up to the sides of the the shaft. The sides of the um, the corpus cavernosum, which is the part yeah. that's inside, right? Yep. And uh, for me, it would get so bad that one of my testes sometimes would go inside my body. Um, like I'm just like so engorged or whatever. Uh, things get so tight, and one of my, my testes go inside my body. And it's like okay, I gotta stop. It's that's uncomfortable, whatever. And I have to relax things and put it back out, and before I can finish up. 
Yeah, I can I can relate to that too. Um, really? Yeah, especially during sex and uh-huh. and right right like right at climax. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's frustrating, that's, right? <laughs> that's that's when I would get a lot of that testicles going inside my body, very painful. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I can relate okay. to that, and the, and I think foreskin restoration maybe have helped a little bit on that, mm-hmm. but I I have done a little bit of metal ball stretching to. Right. You know, it's, it's it's like a bottom body modification to, to yeah. alleviate that pain and it has helped a little bit well, yeah i haven't yeah. had the problem um you know since like my 30s uh, this is more of a problem in my 20s <laughs> and, and teens obviously yeah so um but yeah but, Troy, you're, you're my first uh, interviewer that uh that has had that problem so yeah yeah and, and, and it's one of those things where i don't know if it's if i was born that way or if it's a result of circumcision but my gut feeling is I w- it wouldn't be as bad mm-hmm. if i was left intact i, I yeah. truly believe that with my heart you know i think yeah. that but i've seen intact guys that that have don't have you know their testicles are not hanging really low but mm-hmm. but you can tell that there's you know for the most part they, it looks like a happy penis. It looks like a, yeah. you know, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's in pain. It doesn't look like it's, you know, hurting. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's when you compare the, the circumcised penis and you, and you compare it to an intact penis. That's, it's a night and day difference. You know, this one's been, one's been through battle and the other one's ready for fun, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it, it takes an eye for it too. I, I've liked that porn long enough that I, I never would have noticed this i never even thought about this back in you know i was in my 20s and teens but the more that i've learned about how it works and especially how the natural penis works it's like that guy's definitely circumcised tight <laughs> it's like, yeah yeah or, or, it's, it's, or now now i know when, when i do see a curved penis like that guy got messed up <laughs> he got botched yeah yeah, right. yeah. And, then, and then i mean it's almost like you the veil has been removed yeah that's the best way i can say it is the veil has been removed and you see the damage where before you'd be like oh you, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't even judge it you would not even compare it you'd be like well that's you know he that's normal yeah yeah he's just different yeah. or it's different, just different you know? yeah. it's just a I, different it's just a different form of normal i, and, I remember seeing the my first I, I believe my first intact penis was in a locker room and it was an older guy and it's like oh maybe his skin just stretched out as he got older <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, it really, I, mean, I was i'm pretty sure i was a teenager when that happened and um yeah didn't think much about it so exactly yeah yeah uh so okay so hairy shaft testes or pelvic floor so for me so i don't have my my prep use um when i get an erection the you know, this is the top part of the penis and, and there's the fin down there right so this is the part that goes towards the stomach right yeah. so um when i got start getting an erection instead of the penis going straight out like it's supposed to it does this right because the skin is too tight here yeah it starts pulling my i've even seen pictures on circumcisionharm.org or you know Harry Shaft, uh, I'll show this guy's um, hair coming from his pelvic floor out onto his penis. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and for me, I realized, again, this took me a lot of time to figure it out, but, um, you know, the Corpus cavernosum is kind of like a balloon, you know, one of those balloons that you make into an animal or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you take a balloon and you bend it like that and it kinks. Well, that's kind of like what it feels like inside, inside my penis when it does that. Um, then, you know, for sexual partners, they they want it to be more like this. They want it to be straight. So they start doing things or whatever, and they start bending, and then you end up with like a double kink. And that just, <laughs> I was like, okay, I can't do that position. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel bad for my partner. Um, yeah. Because, you know, they want to do their... It should should be pleasurable, not painful. Exactly. (laughs) I think for me... What's that? For me, me, I think think instead of having it going straight up, I think mine was like the left curve. And that's probably similar because it was just more tight. You know, more more skin was moved on that side. 
mm -hmm. the other side and that's how i how it uh that's analogy yeah yeah if it's the same kind of thing but yeah i mean you can look at the uh, diagrams um drawings on the internet that shows you know a slice of the body and you can see the corpus cavernosum going all the way from the anus out and you know if you think of the old corpus cavernosum it's uh, a balloon when it, that fills up with blood and it's supposed to be stiff as it goes out you know it's supposed to just go straight out right yeah <laughs> kind of like a straight line yeah mirado stenosis uh you know what that is right yeah yep yeah. okay so for me, I had a, a, a tiny little skin bridge across my meatus that uh, caused me to pee all over the place. And my grandmother wouldn't have that. So she took me to the doctor. I only see my grandma like, you know, a month every year or something like that, if that. Um, but yeah, she took me to the doctor and the doctor's like, oh yeah, you got a little skin bridge here. You know, let's slice it off. And oh, did she even say the word skin bridge? No, she didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, the doctor. Okay. Uh, I don't, actually the doctor didn't, say much she just said you got a little skin thing here and uh we just need to cut it real quick and you know, just be really careful be real <laughs> still he didn't numb me or anything it's like yeah it's 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 um it's scar tissue so it doesn't have nerves in it so i don't remember feeling anything when he did it but it's, so they're really careful that he sliced it and then the problem with this peeing everywhere went went away yeah um but yeah so you, the idea is scar tissue builds up around there and then your meatus gets stenosis <laughs> it gets it gets closed up a little bit um yeah I, i've looked at pictures i think you've probably looked at it too it's where you see two penises um, side by side and you see the opening of one that's been intact all of its life and one that's not and uh, the one that's not is narrower and smaller yeah yeah so i i'm pretty sure i deal with a certain level of meal stenosis myself still um but again i I've lived with my entire life, so um, I didn't recognize it until I started thinking about it as a go pee. It's like, well, actually, there's you know, it's a little bit of a sharp feeling right there where it comes out. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's because things are a little close, more closed than the rest of my urinary tract. But I'm not going to go to a doctor and have it <laughs> cut out or anything. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, luckily I didn't have any problems with that type of complication. So yeah. unless you just don't remember right I mean, it happens to a lot of yeah. boys and you could have been two three four years old and your parents go taking you to your oldest and you might not remember it yeah maybe no maybe talk about it and i don't have any sign of any re oh. reconstruction or anything like that on on that okay. part of it so yeah i i was seven or eight years old and i went to a doctor that i wasn't seeing on a regular basis um, because again i was with my grandmother not with my family on, on a regular basis so um, so there was, I, I probably have to dig to find any kind of records on it, but yeah. I do have a very clear memory of it. I, I guess I was old enough where I had the very vivid memory of that. Yeah. So I, you know, I would imagine by seven, eight years old, you're aware enough to, or you make memories enough or something like that would kind of stick with you. You know, you're yeah. Or... <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I think so. I think you good or bad you remember you'd remember something significant like that so. yeah yeah my parents don't even remember my grandma talking to my grandmother about her or anything I, oh really when i brought it up hmm. yeah. Yeah. and then you have a uh, burger skin bridges right that uh where the since the intermucosa is supposed to be attached to the glands during childhood and uh, the prepucial lamina uh, separates over time, um, but if you know you're cutting this, you're separating it as a young child. So the body wants to heal itself. So what it does is it, it attaches again the intermucosa to the glands and creates a skin bridge. And I've heard of guys that talk about how they have to like stick a Q-tip or whatever in between it in order to keep it cleaned out. So yeah, yeah, um, like talk about frustrating it's like you get circumcised so you're cleaner and then you have to use yeah. a fucking tooth uh, q-tip to clean out your skin bridge <laughs> yeah yeah made it worse exactly yeah yeah for me i my experience with that i never had a skin bridge but what i did is um 
and I, I think I discovered it like in my late teens, early twenties, and it was not a skin bridge, but it was maybe a healing tunnel. Mm-hmm. So what, what would do is it, I'd, I'd have a, and I think it's kind of gross to talk about, but it's reality yeah. is that I had, I had a whitehead that would always be in the same spot and I could pop it and it would be a, like a, like a blackhead or a whitehead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was right on right next or near my uh, scar line, mm-hmm. my, my scar, my circumcision scar. Yeah. Um, but what's funny, interesting about this is that as I continued to restore over the years, I can't find it. It's gone. So it, that oh, has, oh, okay. that has good, healed good. itself or yeah. precipitated. I don't know what the new skin grow, growth or whatever, but yeah, but that's, that's, I would say that was a complication from circumcision. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Not, especially if it's it was, that close it wasn't your... because it wasn't because I wasn't cleaning myself. That's for dang yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Cause it was, it was just that one spot. Yeah. And it, and it was over and over and over again. Over Makes and over sense. again. Yeah. And yeah. It was not, it was not painful or it was just like, Oh, and, and I think I probably had it for a long time and I just didn't, you know, take the I, time I, to, to inspect my penis. <laughs> yeah. I would love to talk to like a dermatologist about this topic, you know, about oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. that. That could be one of the, that, that could be a, a different category or name for circumcision harm is that type of thing where it's not a dirty penis. It's, it's a complication from circumcision and it's a tunnel that has not healed because of of the reconnection of the circumcision yeah. and it's created a, a tunnel or, or you know something that's not a skin bridge but it's definitely yeah. part of that whole um complication yeah now pretty much anyone i think that has you know any serious scar on their body could probably relate to that you know i i got an appendectomy when i was uh, before i was 20 i think and um, I have a scar, you know, that's pretty darn big, um, three to four inches wide, um, because back then they didn't do it laparoscopically. <laughs> they sliced mm-hmm. me open and reached in there and cleaned everything out and, and removed it. Um, and yeah, that scar is not comfortable. <laughs> yeah. It itches sometimes and all that. So, yeah. you know, it's like, um, yeah, we shouldn't have scars on our genitalia. That's for sure. I agree. Uh, erectile dysfunction. So uh, it, to me, there's basically two root causes of erectile dysfunction. You've got something physical going on wrong down there and or your biggest sexual organ, your brain, right? <laughs> and for those of us that are you know, missing something down there, and we, especially if we know about it or we understand it, um, it would make sense that you know if, if we're thinking at all about how we're missing out on something or if things don't feel like you know, we know it should or, or we know things are a little uncomfortable and we know why um, or we are thinking about our partner if, you know feeling bad that you know we can't satisfy them like we probably would have been able to. Um, yeah, I mean that's kind of a distraction from yeah <laughs> what you're supposed to be focused on at that time so mm-hmm. it's understandable that, that men would uh, end up with having some form of ed from this yeah it's very it was very common for americans to to have ed you know yeah um and and it's amazing how how society our culture um doesn't even pin the nail on circumcision as the as the as one of the major results of it yeah. You know, ca- causes of it. So. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Supposedly we have the, we sell the most Viagra in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, circumcise the men the most. So it, it's a correlation for sure. Yeah. And then the last uh, physical uh, aspect are, are general botches. And you talk about how you have, uh, you've had a curve. Um, before you did restoration. Uh, there's also botches where, you know, the glands gets amputated or even the entire penis gets, you know, messed up or whatever, from like electrocautery or uh, like I think that David Reamer was electrocautery, um, messed up his penis and they ended up trying to make him a girl. Um, yeah. And uh, the sometimes the clamps are put on wrong they end up, you know, cutting off parts of the glands or, or leaving a big, 
mark on the glands. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's uh, there's babies that die because of like uh, they lose too much blood or whatever. Yep. Blood, blood in the diapers, stuff like that. Um, and even if they don't die, you know, how many end up with brain damage? You can't. The baby yeah. can't stand to lose too much blood. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, uh, so all those physical aspects affect um, our relationships with our partners. It's physical, Lee, right? So we've got uh, we've got this broken up into three pieces: heterosexual, anal, and um, and homosexual, uh, particularly when it comes to docking. So for me, um, when it comes to heterosexual sex, um, vaginal. Um, since I don't have that rolling mechanism and I don't have that lubrication on the end, uh, sometimes my partner would tear if we got too got into it too fast and I didn't we didn't take time to make sure she was got that whap on, you know. <laughs> yeah. Got it, everything lubricated down there. Um, and then you have anal, and uh, you know, with anal you don't really have any lubrication down there, so um, it'd be nice to have lubrication and a rolling mechanism for anal rather than having to use some sort of lubrication like KY jelly or something like that. Mm -hmm. And homosexual docking, well, that doesn't, just does not happen. It's just not something that you can do if you don't have a prep use. <laughs> it's just impossible. Otherwise, it's just like crossing swords, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, then we have the psychological effects. Uh, you have the trauma from the cut itself, and people argue, "Oh, they're not—they're not traumatized or whatever. They're—they're—they're they're, they're too young to even know what's going on, whatever." Well, that's arguable. Um, there's been studies that have been done. They I supposedly did the study that uh, like they did an MRI of the brain as it was getting done, and uh, they had to stop the study because they realized that it was torture. Yeah. Especially yeah. without uh, any kind of anesthetic, and even even with anesthetic, um, it's kind of like going to the, the dentist. You know, they shoot you up, and then they say, "Okay, do you feel numbing up in there or whatever?" You, you know, as an adult, you can respond and say, "Yeah, I'm good." Yeah, Baby's or, not going to be or, able to tell you. Or, that. Wait, 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 wait! I need another shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, baby, babies can't do that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, and a lot of people say that you know the trauma is stored in the body or whatever. Uh, and a lot of people correlate this uh, with um, toxic masculinity, right? And this is you know, toxic masculinity. I don't know. Some people think that it's something that happens more in, in cultures where male circumcision is more common. Mm -hmm. And then you have the trauma from the discoveries of the loss, the harm. Um, for me, I I think that I went through uh, the the stages of grief over and over again. Um, as I, you know, all the all those physical aspects that I that we went through, I didn't learn them all at one time. No. And I even tried to share this, share them all one time, one time with a Muslim guy that was, you know, he he admitted that he was cut, and um, and I shared just one aspect with him, and he he he's like, really man this sucks <laughs> <laughs> i'm mad <laughs> yeah <laughs> dang it <laughs> you know um you just tell you're just getting angrier and angrier and you know and i tried to talk to him some more it's like dude i i'm not even hearing anything anymore because <laughs> i'm just so mad right now so yeah <laughs> I, I, i've heard that <laughs> um, yeah yeah it, it's interesting that you know this topic is even a topic you know and if we didn't have to focus on the trauma and the trauma is real mm -hmm. you know people dismiss it and stuff like that and that's that's beyond me you know you, you if somebody's complaining about something that's the warning sign that's the first warning sign that there's something going on yeah and to to, to ignore that or dismiss it mm -hmm. um that's uh that's a crime on top of a crime you know i i believe you know yeah, but, a lot of people uh, tell me that uh, i've been convinced to you know that i've been harmed it's like no i convinced myself i i 
I, I I'm not easily convinced. I, I asked a lot of people about how things work differently and I study this and it's pretty clear to me that yes, there's definitely a difference in how things. Yeah. Work. Yeah. That's one of the things for me too, John, is that I don't need, I don't need a, a, a scientific study to know this is wrong because I'm dealing with it personally now. Yeah. I've been awakened. Yeah. I, I, you don't, who needs a scientific study? Look at how the darn thing <laughs> works. Yeah. It's basic mechanics, engineering. You know, it just about, I'd really like to run into a, a guy that knows engineering or plumbing or something like that, that can't understand this. Yeah, that's that's beyond me because it's as close to a mechanical piston and cylinder, exactly you know, like an like an engine or something like that. That you know, there's it's it's not just hitting each other metal on metal. It's it, there's lube. There's there's yeah. a, a, a gliding motion. Yeah. Well, that's what the penis and, and, and vagina is supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be a gliding, gentle experience, yeah. fun yeah. experience. Not not this. It feels, you know, very common. We we hear it time and time again. Is is the experience is like is like sandpaper for the female, for sure. Um, well, that's not supposed to be that way. It's because the prepuce is missing and it's it's all rough. Yeah, yeah. And pretty much every mechanic I've ever met knows how bearings work. <laughs> yeah, it's like exactly. rolling bearing mechanism. How about that? See how that works? You know, it's, yeah. it's the only. It's really the only part of the body where. You know, kind of like you know, kind of like your cheeks move back and forth. You know, whereas you know, you try to move your skin back and forth, and your finger it doesn't move. It's it's attached to you know the musculature and everything underneath. But this is skin that moves, glides back and forth, and you know you can tell that when the penis for sure. If you know, even if you're circumcised if, or previously amputated, and you're 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 relaxed, you can definitely tell it's it's loose. It's roll and moves back and forth. It's supposed to move back and forth even when you're erect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I think that was learning that aspect of the function of the pupus early on in the early 90s when I you know opened that Pandora's box and and really did the research, not just like thought about it, but actually did the research. That was the main that was one of the main things that really like pissed me off the most because I realized, okay, now I know what I'm missing. Yeah. I'm, I'm missing not just this prepuce, this foreskin, but I'm missing that sexual function that should aid in, in all of it. So that, that, I mean, that, that was the, that was the eye opener. Like, Oh my gosh. And, and, and as my, my, um, my first wife, uh, who's got a um, behavioral health sciences master's degree, who's a, counselor um how does that make you feel <laughs> oh my gosh how did that make you feel <laughs> when you found that out <laughs> do you really want to know <laughs> yes that's what we're we're talking about here we're talking about trauma were <laughs> yeah, you traumatized exactly. oh my gosh yeah that was yeah. just that was just the that was that twilight zone living real life moment yeah. you know it's like oh my gosh yeah that was just like part of your soul just go like it's yeah. it's bad it's yeah. bad makes us angry it's not it's not fun yeah that's why that's why we got to stop this yeah yep uh okay so that's trauma from discoveries of the loss or the harm uh then you have suicide um uh, which you know the trauma can lead to suicide and as you, you know, and I know uh, there have been suicides over this. Uh, yeah. David yeah. Reamer, Jonathan Conte, Alex Hardy, um, and several others. In fact, one guy, actually two people I've interviewed since I started doing these interviews. Um, one guy, his buddy committed suicide after having lengthy talks with him about, you know, how he's mad about being previously amputated and he's, Pretty clear, pretty sure that you know it was pretty much the main factor in his suicide. I don't have a name or anything, but that uh, that was his testimonial. And then uh, another person I interviewed, her husband committed suicide. She doesn't know exactly how much uh, it, it could attributed to it, but she does know that he was not happy 
about he as he learned um, after the you know, after she got pregnant and um, they started learning about it and all that um, he he was clearly not happy about it yeah yeah I can I can relate to that definitely John is I don't remember exactly the time frame but I, I remember you know when you when you go through those stages of grief you know depression is 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 one that can strangle hold you and and I, you know, thank goodness I've got family and friends that, and, and, and I, I know that I'm not alone. That's, that's mm-hmm. another big thing. Why, why I agreed to talk to you, John is, and I, and I'm very open about it is that I know that I'm not alone. Yeah. And that, Good. that, that, that has probably saved my life is that, the, you know, no isolation. Mm-hmm. You no, know, cause if you isolate yourself and you think about this, yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll eat you up. Yeah. And that's my, that's my experience. It, 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 it would eat me up. And um, so I, I did some, you know, I, I was actually a co-director for your whole baby and, mm-hmm. and, and, there, and that was great for a moment in time, but yeah, there was, a, there was, but it was for, for me, it was, I was getting burnt out and it was, it was getting to where I was, I was like a moth getting close, too close to the flame I where I knew that I just needed to, I just need to check out for a while and I just need to take care of Troy and, and yeah. foreskin and restoration, getting back in the foreskin restoration really helped. And, and just, you know, getting on the groups online, the social media, yeah. you know, and trying to hang out with good positive people. Cause there's, there's some, some people that, you know, I think they just want to create more harm than good mm-hmm. in some of those groups. And, and, uh, you just got just got to be wise about um, who you hang out with online and, and in yeah. person because you need to protect your heart, and that's what I had to do, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I felt suicidal for a while, but thankfully I had the right mechanisms, you know, in front of me that that helped me. And um, I did. Uh, I'm assuming that um, at the norm meetings probably helped too, right? Oh my gosh. Connection. Yeah, I mean, for a while there, it was just me and another buddy, me, me and another one guy. Um, yeah. We would get together once a month, and it, we we would talk about this kind of stuff. We would talk about the circumstances of harm, how we feeling, yeah. and we did talk about you know how we're doing with our restoration. It was almost like a a support group, but more of a comp- friendly competition. <laughs> yeah. If you if you can relate to that, where you know. I, I would I would feel more motivated to keep up with mine my activity because I know it was helping me, but I was helping him. Yeah. And, and it was vice versa. And yeah. uh, so I, I look forward to this pandemic coming to an end and, and getting back to face face to face support groups because um, yeah. they, they really help a lot. So I, I so, so I was a you know coordinator and a, a lead facilitator for that. For state of minnesota for that so yeah and i and i still you know even even being hunched down at home and and not being as social physically face to face you know you get on social media and and you can spend a lot of time yeah. <laughs> as you know yeah. And, yeah. and 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 getting on these uh video calls is is something new to me i haven't done it before as much as i would i should do or want to do but what a what a godsend, you know. Yeah, I think there's only a few of us that are doing and you know video calls like this um, that talks about this. Um, yeah, I, I know Jordan Norell is, you know, he does um, get-togethers, so you can reach out to him. Um, did you by chance do the thing with Ronald Goldman? Uh, no. Uh, was that a video conference or? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't in it. Uh, I know Jordan um joined in um your whole baby was uh kind of coordinated it and got people together okay on it um but it was you know it's meant for men that were feeling traumatized or whatever feeling you know strong feelings about having no i i must have missed that no okay. i didn't uh, i didn't get connected with that one so. i don't know if they're if they're doing it again or anything but yeah i want to look into that sure so, um Okay. Well, thank you, Troy, for sharing um, honestly and openly about that. I, I yeah. personally felt I've had my days where I go into deep depression too, and I just, I disappear. 
Yeah, um, no, I, I, I relate to that. I appreciate you mentioning that, John. And um, it's, it's, it's something very real, you know, and I, I, you know, to talk about is one thing to, to get some supporters and, and, and acknowledgement um, is, is huge, very huge. So, yeah. And yeah, the norm, norm, norm meetings helped a lot. Um, my own personal restoration results, um, getting online, um, going to protests, um, with bloodstained men, yeah. um, your whole, your whole baby, I've done baby expos. Yeah. So I think, yeah. I think you and I, you know, have kind of done some, some very similar activities. Yep. All of those have been little check marks in my path to 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 say to stay sane and yeah. and kind of focused, but also grounded that Troy needs to take care of Troy, and yeah. I can only do I can only do what I can do, and um, it's a little frustrating to to share your message and not to be received in a positive way, where yeah. you instant you instantly want to have somebody go, oh my gosh. Troy, really? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Let me, please talk to me more about it. You don't get that response. A lot no, of people, not often enough, yeah. most often not, what do you get? You get shock. They, yeah. they go in, they go in the shock. Yeah. They're like, I can't believe you're talking about that. Yeah. And we take that yeah. as you're dismissing me. You're yeah. not supporting me. And uh, wow. And then, and then we, as victims of circumcision trauma, yeah. we go through those different stages of denial or uh, yeah. trauma. Um, yeah. Well, you know, everyone is affected by this, uh, which is what we're going to get into here, um, coming up here. So, yeah. you know, pretty much everyone that you talk to is got some sort of connection to, to this, and and probably think that it's good or whatever. Or, and and we're talking about a ta- you know multiple taboo subjects. You know, you got sex, religion. You know, et cetera, et cetera, all tied to it. So it's something that's very uncomfortable for people to talk about. Yeah, definitely. The next uh, psychological uh, effects are on children and not just children like, you know, it sounds like you learned a little bit when you were, I think a teenager, you were saying? Uh, m- most, of, most of it was, I was probably in my mid to late twenties. Okay. All right. when probably probably in the age of 27 28 is when it, it really clicked for me yeah. so i was i was you know i had these pandora boxes open and shut open and shut um but the most most of it happened when i kind of was like okay i'm the internet really opened that okay. up so i didn't have to yeah. i didn't have to ask people questions i could do that on my own mm-hmm. in my own time and i felt safe there and and that's when i was like holy crap yeah yeah um so i have come across some you know older teenagers that got this <laughs> and they're you know uh, obviously traumatized um, it's 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 amazing i think i think the younger generation are k- picking up on it quicker because yeah. they're on social media they're they're yeah they're key, exactly. they're keyboard warriors basically out of the womb you know yeah they're, yeah. they're born with a cell phone in their hand yeah, and uh, you know, on one side, I, I hope that they learn enough before they're eighteen and and get enough guts to actually go sue. You know, yeah, because they they're the only ones I can. Um, guys like you yeah. and I can't. Where it's like the statute of limitations is way too far <laughs> gone. Yeah, or yeah. I I even tried, you know, uh, suing it in federal court against the federal mm-hmm. government. But uh, you know, as soon as they turn eighteen, they can at least attempt something. Yeah. And there have been, you know, successful suits. So, yeah, there has been successful ones. So, yeah. it, but, but you know, I, I see children out protesting with us, including my own um, kids. Um, and I worry about how they're psychologically impacted by this, whether they're cut or attacked themselves. And, uh, you know, they, they grew up seeing this bad thing in our world. Um, you know, I, I feel bad for them that they have to, that they're still growing up in a world. I mean, you and I are lucky because, you know, things have improved a lot since, you know, hundred years ago, 200 years ago, whatever. But, um, but we still have this barbarity in the world. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's, 
I, I think of um, Greta, Greta Thunberg. I don't know if you know her story, but um, you know she went and spoke at the UN about um, global climate change, mm-hmm. and uh, she was de- <laughs> definitely a firecracker. It was great that she had a voice, um, but you know I, I don't know if you read the story. She was actually she went through a period where she was depressed, and uh, her, I guess her dad talks about how um, after she started learning about these problems in the world in school um, she got really depressed and withdrawn and all that until she finally um, sat on the side of a you know sidewalk or whatever holding a sign trying to change things and that's when she got her voice and she got her power and uh, and she lit back up and yeah. uh, so on one side I, I worry that my kids or these other kids might get depressed by this um, but at the same time, when they're out there protesting with us, they uh, were showing them that, hey, you have a voice and it does matter. And it, you know, people will listen, pay attention. Yeah. Do you have any kids, Tori? I do. Yeah, I have a, a son and a daughter. Okay. And then the next section is about medical professionals. You're not in the medical profession, are you? Anyway. Nope. Okay. No. Okay. So I, I bring this up because you know there, we, as you and I know, there's several medical professionals that are on our side on this, uh, and they they have their own struggles uh, with not doing it or not participating in it or um, or dealing with fellow medical professionals that are you know doing it, um, and there's you know they definitely show share their frustrations and feelings on this as well. And then we have parents, uh, especially the regret parents that figure this out after too late. Um, I I was that close <laughs> to becoming a regret parent myself. Yeah. I, think I am very thankful for Intactivist because um, thankfully someone provided my wife some, some information and I was just wanting to accept whatever my wife decided but she insisted that I make the decision with her. And so she provided the information with me too. Um, and to even think about the fact that I would have let that happen to my own children makes me sick. Yeah. Yeah, for me, for me, I, I was kind of in that old school generation still where I, we believed and trusted the doctors. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 um, I ended up being a regret parent because of it. And I, I didn't, I didn't, you know, this was back in early nineties. So it was before the really the launching of the internet. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was, it was back then it was the old library and the, and the the card catalog. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. All those, all those little, Oh yeah. All those little cards. Oh, what's that system called? Oh, I'm forgetting. Decimal system. Decimal system. Uh, Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or something like that. It, yeah. No, it's not. Decimal There's system. actually a it's, term for it, but I yeah, exactly the, the volunteer library. in the, the library. libraries. Yeah, it's a library organization system, right? Yeah, yeah. But anyways, um, you know, Dewey I little, Decimal System. There you go. Yeah. Dewey Decimal System. Yep. <laughs> um, what that teaches. <laughs> um, but anyways, I you know I, I just I just trust I just trusted that still that. You know, the, 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 it just didn't click for me. And that's yeah. the best way I can say it is that even when I had the, you know, the, just the little nugget or the Pandora's box opened a little bit, yeah. I didn't, I didn't keep it open. I didn't say, Oh, this is my time to research this. Yeah. I, I just still trust it. Oh, this is, you know, at that point I was like, well, there's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. And you're not just trusting doctors, you're trusting society, right? I mean, I trusting was. society, trusting yeah. my own, my own experience up to that point. I was in early twenties. Yeah. Um, and then, and then we had my, our, our son first, so he got circumcised. Thankfully he, you know, his circumcision was loose and not as aggressive as mine. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's the positive thing about it. I've been very open with both my son and daughter okay. about my experience and what I believe in and so like that. And, but that's all you can do is, is share your life experience, you know, the positive and the negative, and hopefully yeah. they, 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 they can, 
not make the same mistakes and 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 there's less harm that's done to future generations yeah yeah you can see this bookshelf behind me i've got one and a half about one and a whole half of um shelf space just on genital autonomy books and yeah. i pretty sure 97 percent of those books are you know in the knots and newer <laughs> i don't think there were hardly any books back in the 90s on the topic yeah let, let alone let alone in the 80s when i was yeah. in high school you know so yeah a, lo a lot has changed a lot of a lot of momentum has has definitely occurred in our last you know 40 years for sure yeah yeah now, now there's also documentaries i mean yeah whose yeah. body whose rights and um and American circumcision, and then all the YouTube videos, especially the well-known one, um, "Elephant in the Hospital." Yeah, another great resource for your viewers is is uh, a Tubi. T U B I. There's there's American oh, yeah, Circum yeah. American circumcision and the circumcision movie, the two midwives the from Minnesota. Yeah. yeah, the newest one. Um, it's a little, it's a bit shorter, so it's a it's a shorter uh, watch, which is great for new young parents. Um, but both of them are great documentaries that should yeah. be all viewed. That should be mandatory viewing in high schools, in my opinion. Yeah. Or at least uh, before you become a parent. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, um, um, you know, required. Uh, okay. You're entering college before you're becoming a parent. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's what should be yeah. viewed. Yeah. I, I really enjoy um, protesting at colleges because for a large part, um, there's open minds there. Yeah, it's for it's for fertile and rich ground where yeah. their, their minds are open. You know, they're there for learning. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, regardless of what kind of school it is, uh, I think things like the reception can be very positive. So yeah, one one other guy and I went to Moorpark College here, and um, he actually attends. But um, we protested there, and uh, one guy came back out after a class. He said you're doing good here because we actually had a long conversation in the whole classroom about this that's awesome and uh the the vice principal or whatever came up to me and um asked me well did you get permission to do this or whatever it's like no i didn't think that i had to i mean this is you know this is part of a constitutional right and everything I'm like well can you come with me to the office and um, i came to the office and you know i agreed to leave and all that and uh but you know he, they gave us um you know contacted the college and all that and um and after i did a little bit of time back and forth the email it was like no you can come anytime you want <laughs> you don't nice. have to ask permission <laughs> nice. so i was like good that's i you know and i think that's probably the way that every college should really approach it because they don't want to be seen as um anyone they don't want to be seen as a college that stifles free thinking right yeah yeah, there's there's even there's even we, we even have the the start of hospitals being against circumcision, mm -hmm. baby, baby friendly hospitals here yeah. in Minneapolis. Um, there's there's a few of them, but um, I think I think I think the I think there's a moral compass starting honestly where mm -hmm. there's they're starting to realize okay we need to be on the right side of history here. Yeah, and yeah. and and uh, goodness for that right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's funny. My wife told me about this before, but then someone else reminded me that Providence in um, in Olympia, Washington, uh, I guess all the Providence hospitals, which are um, um, based on, or is it's a Catholic based hospital system, they don't do it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I recently became a webmaster for the Catholics Against Circumcision documentary. I'm not Catholic, but um, yeah, <laughs> got a whole yeah. group of Catholics that help. Um, direct it but um yeah, i i grew up catholic so it's interesting hearing uh you know catholics that are fervently against it because i think yeah we i was circumcised not because of the religion but, but because of cultural nor norm yeah like everyone was doing it so you kind of had to fit in i think yeah. that was more of the pressure of it yeah there's I think, it was, I, think, I think it was mainly pressure from the hospital yeah yeah there's multiple statements on the website um, from popes and all and others, you know, uh, higher up that basically say they're straight out against it. So it's yeah. really interesting. Um, there's also a whole list of letters that went out to various hospitals um, that are Catholic hospitals, uh, because several of them do uh, still do this, even though 
Catholicism yeah. is against it. So, yeah. um, yeah, and uh, and uh, those letters are from uh, quite a while ago, and most of those hospitals, as far as I can tell, if not all of them that got the letters, are still doing it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I could see creating a petition for against each hospital, but uh, so far petitions haven't been hugely successful. Um, online petitions with getting you know people signed. Yeah. Just have to keep raising awareness on this. Yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, all right. So we were, oh, a parent. That's what we were talking about is uh, psychological effects on the parents. So, uh, you have anything else to say about that being a regret parent yourself? Any, um, how do you feel about it or anything? I, I think I think the biggest thing for me is, and I, I I applaud you for keeping your boys intact. I think that is just awesome. I think the biggest thing for me is is if you are a parent and I and I am that that am I you know circumcised my son for whatever reason. I think we as parents need to be the one that have that talk with our sons and say, hey, um, you may not be aware of this. And, and this yeah. has got to be a, at a mature age where they're understanding it. You can't do this at age five or whatever. They, no. <laughs> you, 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 wait, you wait until you know that they're mature enough to receive it. It's almost like that the, the, the birds and the bees talk. You don't do that yeah. way too early. This is, the talk, this is a talk that we, are re, we should be required as parents to have this conversation. Now, even, even when you leave your, your boy intact, you should ha still have this talk that you know, yep. regardless of your sexual orientation, there's boys that were circumcised. We left you intact or, um, you know, you were circumcised and this is what this means. But we just had, we just need that open conversation, open dialogue with our, with our kids. And that's what I did when I, when I really dealt into this and I really knew that I was, I was, I was all in basically. Mm -hmm. I had this conversation over beer and pizza with my kids because they're old enough and just said, Hey, this is where I'm at. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I told my son, I, I apologize to him that this happened to you. Um, because I want to make sure that he knows that I'm on his side. Yeah. Sweet. I actually did a video when I was talking to my two boys, I, I had already talked to them. I already knew it's, it's what I do and what even Jennifer, um, their mom um they, she was actually more of an intactivist before i got to be an intactivist and she was very very involved with your whole baby uh, yeah. did some moderation stuff for your whole baby but um yeah, yeah it, so. really, it really it really can get deep you know and we just need to be allies for our family and and not hide from this conversation i think it's really yeah. important that you know for sure and I, and I and i appreciate the opportunity to share my story and and you know, my experience with you, John, is, is that, you know, we need, we need to heal, heal this part of our country and, yeah. and change this information and the powerful movement that we, uh, we don't continue this, uh, this barbarity, you know, it's, yeah, sure. Well, and, it, it, and it affects everyone differently. You know, my son yeah. was pretty yeah. much like, oh, whatever, you know, yeah, for now. <laughs> but for now, for now, or yeah. or you know, maybe you, you don't know. You know how you don't know how it's hurting or or yeah. touching somebody's life until you have this conversation. Yeah. But my my true heartfelt feeling is don't let it be their friends or or the school or yeah them them getting teased about it or you know let, let keep it in the house and yeah. talk about it yeah. so. Um, you know, and it's not about justifying it. Don't justify it. No. Just say, you know, this is what happened or this is why we kept you intact. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I think uh, for the, the boys that are left intact, I think they're, you know, what I hear is not, not one of them will say, well, you should have circumcised me, mom or dad. <laughs> the, the message is, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. You know? That's the message that they receive. They, you know, oh. the youngsters they they get it quicker than us adults. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's my, what, that's my, my kids see, you know, what I do, and they they often see the 
the comments and stuff like that and the people that defend the cutting and they're like just disgusted <laughs> just, or yeah. shocked or stunned or whatever it's it's like and they both get into it sometimes like <laughs> the, the, they're a little intactivists themselves <laughs> yeah oh absolutely yeah i think i think you've given them the best you know best information and best part of this the being you gotta you're on one side or the other right you're for yeah. it or against it you can't be too neutral very long yeah you know so yeah, yeah definitely all right, and then the last uh, psychological um, section is about intact men. Um, I've come across multiple intact men. Like one would, one told me that you know he he felt um, bad or ashamed or whatever uh, during his teen years and when his or even preteen years when his buddies were all missing the prepuce and he didn't and he thought that maybe he should have been that way or yeah whatever so i mean that as long as this is occurring and as long as there's a difference it's going to not just affect psychologically the, the ones that are cut it's also going to affect psychologically the ones that are and there might be bullying one way or the other um i did an interview with one guy from germany um and uh i think it was william i uh, know uh, i can't remember his name right off him but um and he said that he and his buddy, who were both, you know, they were both intact, actually kind of bullied a guy that wasn't. So mm -hmm. you know, this argument that oh, you don't want your kid to be bullied in school, it's like, he can go either way. And they're probably going to find ways to bully each other anyway. So you don't, <laughs> that's a bad excuse. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you know, I think, uh, I, I think on that is, you know, being intact is, uh, they are like they're they're on the other side of the railroad tracks where our culture is pro circumcision, where they feel left out or they feel or they're not taught the value of what they have. Yeah. You know, they, they think, oh, I need to get circumcised for for me to get a partner that will that will love me or support me or whatever. So there's that there's that social pressure. Yeah. Um, it, that pressure needs to be put on education that that you have you have what you should have mm -hmm. you know you're not there's you're you're not in the wrong here yeah um and that's that, that's our educational system that's that's our cult, cult, cultural um yeah. you know beliefs and stuff like that that really are kind of messed messed up with this yeah so you know if they're raised in this culture where they say well circumcise is better and well, why didn't you circumcise me too? I, I, I want to, I want to be part of this club or whatever, right? Um, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's kind of funny how that actually applies to FGM too, because, you know, it. You read Rosemary Romberg's book. I don't know if you've read it, but um, the thought is that they started cutting females too to include them. Yeah. Whereas a lot of thinking today is no, they get cut because of inequalities between male and female. Yeah, it's just... uh, well, everywhere they cut females, they also cut males. <laughs> that didn't quite work out. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, any anyone else that you think I'm missing as far as being psychologically impacted? Mm, I think we covered we covered we covered quite a bit. Um, yeah, I think uh, we did pretty good. Uh, then the next section is about relationships, and, uh, and, and I start off with the child-parent trust uh, relationship. Um, if you're, you know, a parent that did this to your child, um, they made a mistake, or or not even admitting, you know, the mistake or whatever, and how does that affect the the trusting of your, the, you know, how much does your child now trust you uh, to make other good other decisions about your life yeah i think i think it's kind of it, it slaps slaps in the face of parental awareness and parental you know just just being a good parent is is it starts on the wrong foot right off the bat yeah is is you allowed you know i i allowed somebody to you know take my son um away and get circumcised you know so mm -hmm. i i think that, that that can only affect 
the bonding situation. Um, yeah. And then you're dealing with the, the own s- situation of that experience happened to him that happened to you. It's kind of a trickle down effect a little bit, but mm-hmm. um, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not ever circumcision never creates good things. Mm. It's only bad. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And you know, you, we talk about this, um, you know, trust being lost between the child and the parent um, about male genital mutilation um, because that's what we're most familiar with here in the U.S. But I've watched these videos. There's a whole playlist on YouTube from Criteria Nipples, um, and you can tell that there's that the ch- relationship changes between the daughter and the mother. When, yeah, when the I don't doubt that. I don't, yeah, I don't doubt that one bit. It's, you know, it's a huge abandonment issue. And they and and they they might not have words for it, but there's deep seated mm-hmm. experiences. Yeah, and then you get older, and um, and you talk to your parents about it, um, you know, feeling some regret that you were cut or whatever. And if your parents aren't open minded about it or whatever, or don't take any ownership um, over the the choice that they made, um, then that can diminish the trust even more between child and parent yeah luckily for most part my my parents I, I didn't go talk to my parents about it to get any kind of retribution or any apology or anything from my parents um i included my parents in a talk with my younger brother in order to try to protect my nephew and mm-hmm. that's when my parents heard that you know heard more directly um i think they already knew that i was you know i kept my sense intact they already knew that but they didn't ever hear you know my own complaints about um you know how i'm how i've been impacted and physical harms and all that and uh they hadn't even heard about my meatal stenosis by the by this point but i was i brought them together with my younger brother in order to protect my nephew again and um and they were pretty well you know they they listened they they had an open mind about it so they didn't uh they just said they didn't know and uh they were sorry so yeah i i i did i did speak with my parents and you know i think i think it was more of a you know they were open and they were listening and you know i think pretty much it it was a kind of a shock value like oh my gosh yeah you know so yeah but but very supportive um not negative. That's the main thing, and not denial. Mm-hmm. So it was not a blatantly, you know, hey, we're, I want you to shut this talk down right now. Yeah, it was not. It was nothing like that. So, and that's and that's where I come across is that if they only knew how I felt now, you know, they would have never done it when I was born. Yeah, they would. Yeah. They would have been like, hell no. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, back you know back in the days when you and I were cut, it was like what 95 percent are getting cut oh well, probably <laughs> probably 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 100 percent in my region in minnesota yeah, I bet. about you so. know 99 99 i, I bet it was 99.99 percent yeah. so it, it almost really been going against the grain back then everyone yeah so it's it's almost so common here at least for my age group that yeah you wouldn't even question it it would be like you know i'm sure doctors didn't even ask sometimes i think they're like you you want to oh, cut yeah. while they're taking them out the door you know yeah, it was like cutting the umbilical cord is just a given. Yeah, I think I think circumcision was was part of that that whole yeah. thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't I don't blame my parents, um, and that's part of the reason why I, I accepted doing this video is that I've I've been open with all my families, even even with coworkers. They're like, eh, if you want to talk about circumcision, eh, Troy's the guy to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm I'm kind I kind of. And then, in fact, it's it's like I post something online or something like that. Oh, here he goes again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of the, some you know, part of it, part of it's just like therapy for me. Part yeah. of it's not so much like I don't think I'm going to change their minds, but it's therapy for me. It's like I got to share who I am. I got to share who Troy is, you know, and yeah. accept it or not. That's that's where, that's where we're at right now, folks. <laughs> yeah. And for me, it's a uh, it's a matter of my conscience. It's my conscience eats at me if I'm not 
sharing this um, because yeah. I, I know that as long as I'm not, um, there's this is going to continue. Um, it, yeah, it's. I, I wake up, you know, every day thinking about like, there's tens of thousands of children today getting their genitals cut without a medical need, yeah. and uh, if I could save any of them, you know, I should do that. Yeah. Definitely. All right. Uh, then there's the co-parenting aspect of this. Uh, um, as, as you and I, I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure you're quite well aware, you know, of uh, parents that ended up getting divorced over this or got really close to getting divorced or mm -hmm. fighting about this. Um, and the, your whole baby community group, you see all the time how you know, a woman needs to try to convince her, you know, husband or baby daddy or whatever, not to, um, not to circumcise their son. Yeah. Uh, so there's, you know, it creates a, a stressor between the two parents. Yeah. And then there's the mother child bond. Uh, thinking, uh, my wife, Jennifer, she's, um, she was a trained doula and uh, both of our boys were born home. Um, she was going to do it at the hospital and then OB originally and all that. OB didn't offer any information <laughs> when uh, when the question came up. Um, and that's another reason why I do this because doctors aren't offering information. Mm -hmm. um, but children are supposedly supposed to bond with their mother, um, especially right after birth. They're supposed to be that skin to end contact, not you know, not being ripped away from mom and um, and taken down a hall to have part of its penis get off or whatever, right? Um, and then, uh, as we know as intactivists, there's plenty of studies that have been done on this that it affects um, breastfeeding too, because the, pain, the child is in pain. It's kind of hard to focus on eating when it's dealing with that pain down there. Mm -hmm. And then there's a uh, pedophilia ideas on this. Uh, there's multiple theories about how genital cutting in general, not just you know on um, on males, but um, there's multiple ways that this contributes to pedophilia. Uh, one of my theories is that because males are missing, you know, half of their um, very erogenous tissue they're left with a lot less erogenous tissue and and um and pressure centers right so there seems to be a lot of appeal towards you know tight vaginas some women even go get labiaplasty or reconstructive surgery or whatever to make things tighter down there um, to satisfy the men well question is why do men feel the need to have tighter vaginas um, and you know, if they're if older women aren't tight then maybe they're maybe that's a reason to be attracted to younger women yeah so it's a it's just a theory but i think that's a plausible one yeah i think i think uh it's, it's part of uh you know the change you're, you're changing the anatomy of the of the penis and and there's a psychological effect and there's a physical effect um you know yeah. Yeah, it's, it, even even anger management is part of it too. Where, you know, dealing with anger and and they don't even know why where it's coming from. So yeah. it, there's, I mean, it, it it really this whole subject could be a a psych you know, a psychiatrist or psychologist um, just dream mm -hmm. uh, on studying and just and understanding the whole aspects of it. You know, it just yeah, it baffles me. You know that yeah. there isn't like tons of um, of that of that field just just running all over the place on this topic yeah, and we have one we know quite well in the movement yeah For those that are watching ronald goldman phd psychologist exactly yeah it'd be interesting to see uh, more psychologists uh, yeah know, and he, write articles and, or something about it and he's he's really a uh you know i wouldn't say a lone lone doctor with this topic but he's 
he's premier. He's a he's a premier. You know. Yeah. He's and he's, he's, a, he's also Jewish, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's a big part of it too. Is that yeah. you know being against circumcision is not about being uh, against um, the Jewish faith. You know, being against circumcision is not being is not against the Jewish faith. It's I've got many friends that are Jewish that are against circumcision. You can there. It's not anti-Semitic to talk about talk against about circumcision. It's that's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's it, you know it comes down to hey the little boy does not have a religion yet. You're growing him into that faith, but you don't have to tear apart his body. Yeah. As a signal, you know that's that's Aztec. To, that's Aztec. You know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel like uh, a branded cow, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it, it really comes down to, you know, like we've talked about all, all this talk is bodily autonomy and, yeah. you know, the human rights of the, of the child, of the, of the man he'll be. Sure. All right, the next section is about uh, doctor-patient relationships. I often refer, uh, add just how, um, how I personally can't ha imagine, I can't have a doctor that um, that supports, promotes, or um, acts out this this ritual on, on children, um, non-medically. Uh, I, I figure if they can do that to a child um, and they can violate their Hippocratic Oath there, then what uh, what else are they going to justify when it comes to treating treating me? Yeah, that's a good that's a good way of of thinking and talking about it is you're qualifying a doctor's a, a physician based on his only one aspect of his whole thing thinking is are you for or against circumcision? Yeah, you know, I I like that. So I'm at the age where you know, hey, I don't go in unless I have to, but. You ain't touching it again. That's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm working on regrowing some of it, not not having it removed again. Yeah. Um, I don't know, amen, be, have, amen to that, brother. <laughs> have you had a chance to um, read this book yet from Jay? No, I haven't. No. Is that a pretty good read? Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to uh, get that one. I don't have one. I don't have that one. I have a, I have a library like you. I've got, I've got quite a few <laughs> books on my... And and videos. I got the the DVDs too. The yeah, documentaries. you can read it online too. Um, you know, download it as an ebook, but yeah, he uh, yeah. he talks about his um, visits with doctors uh, with his penis, and uh, he he talks about how one, um, I guess it was a urologist, took his his restored skin and pushed it back and said, "There, that's why it's supposed to be." Like, oh my gosh, I just. <laughs> fired <laughs> yeah i'm out of here i'm gonna get a different doctor <laughs> yeah exactly yeah that's wow that's a bedside manner i tell you <laughs> yeah exactly yeah okay and then the last uh, relationship uh, topic is about friend relationships with friends and family um yeah if you're in a you know if you're all your friends and family are all you know, from, I don't know, Russia or, you know, South America where, you know, they pro they don't do it uh, or China, you know, <laughs> it's like not done. Then, yeah. you know, you, you're probably not going to have any kind of relationship issues between friends and family. But here in the United States where it's such a hot topic, uh, you know, I, so many intactivists, including myself, have had people unfriend and cut you off and, and all that whenever discussing this topic. So Yeah. Yeah, for, I think for me, I, I've, you know, I've been, I've shared it with friends and family, and I'm, I've, I've been open with it on Facebook and stuff like that. And you know, there's, I've, I've had cousins, you know, like direct message me and say, hey, what's all this about? And they're very open, and I, 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 I love that stuff. And then there's other ones that, okay, it's enough of that, enough talk about this, <laughs> you know, like, well, hey. You, you can you can unfollow me you can unfriend me that's your choice but i'm not going to stop talking about something that i believe in you know yeah and, that, and that's where i've grown in that maturity of of having that boldness to say you know what this yeah. is where we're at you know yeah and i'm not gonna i may i may respect you and be quiet around you but i'm not going to be quiet forever and not say anything to anyone 
yeah because of how you feel about it you know i think a lot of people don't realize that on facebook you can be a friend with someone on facebook without following their, their exactly story. you can unfollow them you can still be friends but you can you know yeah. stop yeah, the notifications and stuff like that yeah exactly yeah. So I think I think most people don't even understand that part of Facebook that it's either one or the other or or all or nothing. You know, yeah. it's like, no, you can you can be friends, but you can Levels. you don't like my post, then you can un, unfollow it. Yeah. But regardless, I, I think on this topic with friends and family and and uh, then you know, talking about the the trauma of it, um, it's just being open with the awareness of it, you know. The, the crime of, of this generation would be to not say anything because we know something. Yeah. You know, when you see something, say something. Well, here we go. Let's, yeah, let's, exactly. we're saying something because we yeah. know something yeah. is yeah. bad yeah. about circumcision. So why don't you listen about it mm-hmm. instead of, instead of putting your head in the sand or ignoring it or having that cognitive dissident, just yeah. like have, be open to say, well, Troy's really talking about this a lot. I wonder what that means. Yeah. <laughs> you know, instead of, you know. Yeah. Be curious. Yeah. Be, be curious. Be, be uh, you know, have a creative, have a, uh, you know, a bit of curiosity. Yeah. You know, so, but uh, I'm in a good place, you know, and I, and I enjoy sharing this information with people that are open to hearing yeah. about it. So. You know, I think the one thought that really got me active at the beginning of 2018 was just shortly after seeing the um, American Circumcision documentary at the uh, Social Justice Film Festival. This was before it was widely, you know, available. Um, was that, you know, in 15, 16, 17 years from now, 18 years from now, um, the child that's being born today might um, be angry that they were cut. And they're going to, maybe they might know that I knew it was bad and they're going to ask me, well, what are you doing about it? Yeah. I've got to say I was doing something. Yeah. See, our, our, our footprint is very visible what we do now because of social media. Yeah. You know, what we say, what we do. um, It's very prominent how we believe, you know, what we believe and what we talk about on this subject of circumcision. So it's very important. I think I think the the war cry right now is is get get on the right side of history, yeah. Because, because history will catch up to us way sooner than later yeah. about this topic of circumcision harm. Yeah, people aren't going to be able to say that you know they didn't know. Less and less people, yeah, yeah. and 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 more and more people are are leaving their baby boys intact because of this reason, because yeah. of the message, because of the solid positivity of of leaving them leaving them whole, you know. Even if they think, well, maybe there's some benefits, but well, let's make them make the choice. Yeah, it's fine. Let them choose. Most most likely, when they're adults, they're gonna go, "What in the hell? I'm not ever gonna cut that off." Yeah. That's, too good. That's the best part of Venus. <laughs> exactly. Haven't that? Isn't that what we hear? <laughs> yeah. And then we yeah. uh, circumcise guys. Go. I don't yeah. want to hear that. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, and but, you know, some intact men are willing to, you know, speak out and. And be honest about that. Others, you know, try to hide because they don't want to be called anteaters or children X or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Don't body shame the females. Yeah. But go ahead and body shame the males all you want. Yeah. Come on, you can't have it both ways. Yeah. That's that's my message. Yeah. So any other relationships you think I missed? Like everything. No, I think I think you pretty I think you pretty much covered it a lot. I think. I think one thing is, is coworkers, you know, we don't talk about coworkers maybe, mm-hmm. but that's, that would yeah. be, you know, that, because you're, you know, you, you have, you know, you're kind of away, away from family more so, and you're working at home more than being at family. And that can be a family away, away from family in yeah. most cases. And, and you're, you're seeing families growing at work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what do you do? Do you, do you say something at work or you don't? It's yeah. It's really, uh, but when, you know, when I'm invited to talk about something personal about, you know, my journey or a hobby of mine, yeah. top of the list is downhill skiing and intactivism. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. That's, that's Troy. That's me. You know, I, I like, <laughs> I like talking about both and I enjoy sharing that passion because I know what it leads to. I know it leads to better families, better, 
you know, better social economics as far as um, emotional integrity. Yeah. You know, it's, it all, it all comes down to circumcision harms. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't, it doesn't, they can say benefits, but it does not give benefits. Yeah. I even, you know, you can say the same sort of benefits for like cutting off your toes. It's like, okay, well, that's, that's why gout and, you know, athlete's foot and, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know uh, Bob Marley. He died from cancer that started in his toe. <laughs> it's like, did he really? Yeah. He did, he did oh my that. gosh, yeah. I didn't know that. No, I referred to a lot of times. Like, yeah, look yeah. at the story. <laughs> he should have had his get started. He, he should have had his toes amputated when he was born. Exactly. <laughs> people would be like, "What?" I don't get people's we, logic. Why they don't we, see we, this. we don't do that, do we? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, maybe I should add that because you know. <laughs> the relationship with um between uh, employers sometimes is gets rocky yeah, um, yeah. I, i've i've actually had one doctor um call my employer one oh, time wow um don't work there anymore but it didn't have anything to do with this but um and my employer tried to argue with me a little bit about it and it's like this was this is an easy one um this doctor was like i don't see this doctor personally but this doctor was putting information out on the internet so I called him out on it on the internet and he got pissed. So he called yeah. up my, my, my employer and my, I, and my employer was like, well, you don't see this doctor. Do you? It's like, um, no, but he's putting information out on the internet. So that is, that gives you free reign to correct them and point people to the accurate information. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And they're like, oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> you know, that's a different way of silencing somebody, isn't it? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So take that, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, uh, freedom of speech and, you know, freedom yeah. of information to yep. people. Yeah, exactly. So I don't, yeah, I should see if I can find that um, post or whatever it was. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it was actually on his website and it's just like I put, um, a review or whatever that called him out on his on his um, information on his website and he got pissed. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, dude, you can call me and we can hash this out or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. I, you know, lots of people have lost their jobs uh, speaking out about this. And many fellow intactivists that I've talked to, it's like, yeah, we got fired. Like one guy, he ended up, um, he continues to be active, but he uses a different name now. But okay. he got fired from a high up job in a bank, a sizable bank too. And the HR person or whatever said, you know, you're, you're un-American to be against circumcision. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's an American thing. <laughs> yeah. That, that's, uh, that could be the next discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. For, for employment is, is talking against bodily autonomy and human rights. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, one of the first steps that we have to do is fix the the law that got implemented um, during the Obama era. Um, that protects. Or the idea is that if it's it's about relationships between um, the U.S. And, and other countries, and if the other country um, in any way um, persecutes anyone that um, supports male circumcision, well. That could be reason to cut off ties with that country, and wow. I often give credit to that law um, when it comes to Iceland and Denmark. They both um, had discussions. Uh, they, you know, if you if you look at it from votes perspective, the majority of that country is completely against it, and they're for a, a ban on it, but they still won't do it. Like yeah. how how does that work? Because that's a democratic country, and you know, like ninety seven percent of the of the population is for banning it, but the the representatives won't pass a law. And it's like, well, why? Well, I think it's probably because of this relationship with the USA. No one wants to, you know, lose a good relationship with such a powerful country. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, so uh, that's for the ships. Uh, the next thing is uh, FGM uh, and how this is all interrelated. Um, 
people people get reactive whenever this is brought up um, in relationship to you know male circumcision. It's like you can't compare the two. It's like uh, you're talking about genitalia, so on both cases, right? and you're talking about non-therapeutic cutting and non-consensual cutting in both cases. So how is it not comparable? But um, it, what's more yeah. important to me is it, it, when, when they react like that, they're like, okay, well, it, female genital mutilation is obviously more, is far worse than, you know, male circumcision. And, and some people say, well, female circumcision, there's no benefits and it's all harm and male circumcision is, is no harm and all benefits, right? So we have to, we're trying to fix that equation by yeah. educating people about how it is harmful and yeah. and, um, and and challenge those benefits. Um, and when you look at female circumcision, well, there's actually like no studies that have been done to even find out if there's benefits. Why not? Yeah, yeah. And and I let's, think let's cut off some labias and see if that reduces you know, HIV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy <laughs> right yeah. uh or but they probably they'll probably say oh that's unethical well how is it ethical to do that to males in africa <laughs> yeah right come on i i don't know why this is so hard to yeah it's, it's almost like it's almost like competing against like what tragedy is worse you know getting hit by a, a truck or a car you know yeah. they're both bad yeah, exactly. Why, why does this have to be a pissing contest at all? Why yeah. Just say, let's, you yeah. Know, if it's not therapeutic and it's not consensual, let's just not do it. Yeah. It, it, it's all about, it's not about how much is cut off. It's the first cut. So yeah. it's not about, it's not about how much is cut off or where. Yeah. It's about the first cut. Unconsensual and, and no diagnosis. Yeah. You know, what I need is a mock, um, a, a mock vulva. <laughs> <laughs> so I can go over all the different kinds of, you know, the different types of cuts that occur because, you know. Yeah. Do they make crocheted uh, vaginas? For John? <laughs> I, 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 you know, I bet I can find one on the internet somewhere, but I, I took a, a foam <laughs> ball and drew on it one time just to talk about how, you know, the relationship between the vulva and the, and the penis during foreplay. You know, I, I there have you a go. out there on that. But, yep. but yeah, it, it's not even, you know. Most people think of the 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 husband stitch, uh, where things are sewn together so they can't have sex until they're married, and then things are cut back open when when they're married so they can't have sex with the husband, whatever. And from what I understand, that's like ten percent, if if that, of the numbers of female circumcisions that occur, or caught in or whatever. Yeah, it, I think it'd be really surprising. We're talking about female uh, genital mutilation. I think most people in America would be very shocked um, to know that, you know, there there are children, young girls that are that are that are in America, mm -hmm. that are getting transported overseas, getting this done, and then they're coming back because of the of the the cultural norm yep. that they they think it's right for them to do it, but they don't do it here um, yep. because it's not as accept accessible, yep. but they still do it. Yep. It's just like. Yep. In America. 2018, there was a yep. Michigan case, federal. That's when the federal anti FGM law was struck down by a judge because it was not constitutional due to the state's rights. And then just recently, um, a, a woman in Texas was indicted for taking her daughter um, overseas yeah. to get it done. So, yeah, it does happen, um, especially as we have people from other countries move to the US. Yeah. For whatever yeah. And I think I think that's a positive for um, male genital mutilation. Is it any anything that happens legislatively uh, against female is only only going to help yeah. the male side because they're 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 connected. Yeah. You know? Yep. So. We're even we're even seeing um, things change on the whole intersex spectrum of this too. Yeah. Um, yeah. One but, one hospital but, outright apologized to the intersex community. Yeah, I, I think that actually has some some you know that's got some holding power right now. Um, you know, can you imagine you know a doctor choosing what side he's going to operate on and make him male or female because of the genital genitalia doesn't match their textbook? Yeah, it's, you know yeah. if if 
you know, the saying is if, if, if he can pee, let it be. Yeah. No, well, it, it yeah. goes for females yeah. too. You know, yeah. let, let them choose, you know, if it doesn't look normal, yeah. let them choose what happens to their body down the road, you know, when they yeah. can consent to it. Yeah. Large clitoris, small, you know, micro penis, uh, you know, uh, yeah. gonads that didn't drop or whatever, you know, it's, yeah. And it, it's yeah. not society's choice, you know, it's not their will that should be running this, you know, and, and yeah. that a good example of, um, the guy that got circumcised, the boy that got circumcised and then they turned him into a female and then he committed suicide. That, that's just horrible. Yeah. 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 Horrible. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and there's there's a lot of um, a lot of things come out of the woodwork. Uh, like Hita Valoria has written a book about this. Um, there's there's a couple other books I think. There's uh, videos all over YouTube. Uh, you just type in intersex, I N T E R sex, and a whole bunch of videos, TED talks about yeah. it. Um, so uh, there's there's so many different stories. Uh, that's even more interesting than I think probably than male circumcision because i think when it comes to um uh, us it's pretty consistent what what's done to us right yeah um, when, there's, when it comes to the intersex there's a whole array of various situations that occur and uh and um and different kinds of surgeries that have been done yeah yeah Clear, clearly body modifications that shouldn't happen yeah um i understand that there's supposedly some cases where you know the person, the, the child is in danger if they don't fix something. I mean, like yeah, if, in if, short term danger. Yeah, yeah. But then that should that, but that even with that, that should be very minimal. Yeah, it, it shouldn't be a, a complete modification. It should be just okay. We're just going to make it it work. Yeah. For health, for health and livability, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you, there's a medical indication. You obviously you you fix it you have to you know, yeah if you want to keep the child alive and and healthy yeah the slippery slope on that is some most doctors that circumcise think it's it's they're doing it for a good medical benefit yeah so that's that's starting on the wrong foot yeah i call those preemptive right? yeah you're, you're preemptively amputating a body part to prevent something that might or might not happen in the future yeah exactly so that's that there's no medical indication in that in those cases. Yep. Uh, and then the very last thing is about social productivity. And if, the first thought is, you know, if all these moils and doctors or butchers, whatever you want to call them, were spending time doing something else, um, more productive instead of cutting children's genitals without a medical need, uh, who knows? Maybe we'd have cancer solved by now or maybe we'd have covid figured out <laughs> faster <laughs> you know, right? yeah, yeah so yeah it, it, it's all about um good way of saying is uh you can you know put your focus it's it, you can only focus on so much yeah but if you if you're causing this trauma then you're you're adding to what needs to be focused on yeah so it's it's you know cost wise money wise uh emotional wise um family breakup family dynamics um social media you know there's there's a lot that could be saved um by not doing it in the first place yeah yeah and there's you know guys like you and i you know, over spending time trying to restore our penises or spending time trying to educate people about this and it's you know, it would be, you would think that'd be as easy as spending a, a minute to share a link to the American Circumcision documentary or yourwholebaby.org or something like that and be done with it. But how it, it's, it just pees me off sometimes when I share something and they come back with back to me and they haven't even watched it or even, even looked at the you know information I shared with them and start asking me questions or challenging me or whatever. It's like, you know, if you would have watched what I just gave you, you would have already had the answer to that. It's like, don't yeah. waste my flipping time. <laughs> I'm not yep. going to sit here and try to educate you in comments. And it's not something that is a, you know, two minute or five minute or even a 10 minute conversation. 
This is yeah. a deep, complicated subject, and you're going to have to peel through your own um, layers of cognitive dissonance on it. And um, that's a time consuming process, unfortunately. Yeah. And for some people, it, it's, it's a lifetime. <laughs> yeah. You know, it takes decades to go through these processes and right. awareness and, and, and truly understanding the magnitude of this. Yeah. I, I myself oh. took, you know, over a decade to finally decide to become an intactivist. I feel kind of ashamed about that, but at the same time, I realized, you know, I, I had my own process, my own internal process. I'm an introvert, so I would learn about one little thing that I'm missing, and I get mad about it, and then I, you know, go back inside of my head and go through the, um, the grief, and then after I come through the grief of that, and I might learn something else and go through it again. And <laughs> it took me a lot of years to get to the point where it's like, yeah, this needs yep. to be dealt with. Yeah, you're not alone, John. That's for sure. Thanks. For well, I appreciate it. I, I appreciate you having this talk with me and interviewing and uh, being open enough to show your face and share your voice um, for the world to hear. You bet. Well, thank you, John, for the opportunity. I appreciate the time and hopefully we, we change some minds and hearts around Absolutely. on this subject. Definitely. Yeah. All right, Troy. Well, I'll, I'll be seeing you online and maybe someday we'll get out there and protest together. <laughs> Sounds good. I look forward to the time. Thanks. All right, man. Have, you a bet. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Right. Thanks. Take care.